All right, guys, the mics are hot now, so. Hello. Don't, uh, don't say anything you, uh, you, you can't take back. <clears throat> that Quinn's horns are not immaculate. Yo, do not oh. start with that. <laughs> <laughs> do not even start with me. Force me out of you. All right. Make your aisle, make some meat out uh, of you. I love that song. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, so I watched the new one, and then I had to go back and watch the, we watched the cartoon one right afterwards, because, like, I was so nostalgic for the original songs and stuff. All right. Are people yelling at me yet? No, no, no. Okay, cool. All right. Alright, I'm gonna switch this over to our new scene. Guys, I had to completely remake our image because I broke it for my extra live stream. But, in its wake is now a much more coherent and better looking... Uh, oh yeah, let me, let me check it out. Uh, ...screen here, so... Oh. It looks like that needs a little bit of resizing. This is You're how the gonna... sausage gets made, guys. We're gonna see this on Twitch. Yeah, if you uh, pull up yep. Twitch, uh, it's live right now. So it mostly looks the same, uh, but I had to, like, I think I got your guys' backgrounds working better now. Uh, so when you talk, you should actually, like, be able to... Oh, this D&D Beyond overlay is cool. And then I got the D&D Beyond overlay cool. enabled. Yeah, so you can guys see your HP and stuff. Uh, or other people who are watching can click. And So if you manage it in D&D Beyond, and I'll try to keep track of it in Roll20 as well, then people can see live, you know, what's going on there. Um, yeah, it looks like just your... Um... Roll twenty window needs. It's a, it's really zoomed in right now, um, so like it'll follow like as I pan on whatever map we have on. So mm -hmm. I, I, I mean the text, you're it's cutting off. Oh yeah 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 yeah. It was just I just saw that. That's chat group. Let's see here if I can do this. I'm just gonna leave Twitch because I just heard everything twice and it <sighs> drove me. In. Yeah just yeah just muted. Yeah, mute Twitch yeah, yeah for sure. You have chat I disabled? Have done that. Do I have chat disabled? It might be follower only chat. Oh no, my whole like computer's frozen. That's what's going on. Oh. <laughs> well, don't crash. Help. Let don't... it go. Let it go. <laughs> or just Chrome. Yeah, it's like just Chrome. All right, I am going to. Uh... When are we gonna meet Elsa in this game? Uh, she. That's her right there. You see that owl character? Um, that's that's her. You see that owl? She's character? the big bad that's, here. That's her. You see that owl? She's character? the big bad here. That's, that's her. Oh god, I can't do it that way. I gotta do it this way. Um. Oh, alright. I'm, I'm gonna mute and deafen everyone really, really quickly. Keep talking though, so I can hear. I can check to all your mics are still or sounds. Hello. Still sounds good. Keep talking. Keep talking. Chat. I mean, say I've say got say got anything. Chat. I mean, say I've say say, say anything. I mean, say 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 anything. I mean, say 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 anything. It's echoing. All right. All right. Well, it wow. echoed like hell. So hopefully it's better. Um. Cool. I think we're ready to get going here. Hello, sweet Jukes. Thanks for stopping by on the stream. It's really sweet of you. Really glad you could make it. All right. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's switch over our music to something more serious here. Ah. Uh. Mm hmm Yeah. I'm so serious. <laughs> All right, so uh, if everyone's ready to get started, then let's just jump on in this here. Um, we've got, uh, we've got. Uh, so this is our third session. So last session, uh, a Blizzard had kind of hounded everyone, forcing you to uh, to take uh, retreat into a nearby cave. Uh, well, it's too quiet. There we go. Uh, once you get into the cave, you, it, you kind of figured out that it's maybe where the kobolds were were hiding out that ambushed you. Uh, and in the back, you guys found a tunnel that uh, descended uh, kind of down deep into under, under, 
the Icewind Dales, essentially. It was hard to really get a grasp of how expansive it was. Um, you tried to try to slowly make your way down the tunnel. Um, Davos tried to tried to just really uh, cleverly kind of like put pi pittens, pittens in, we ever discover, however we pronounce those, um, into the wall so that you guys could uh, drop down without um, without falling. So, uh, but unfortunately, he, like, one was just a little too loose, and I think almost everyone but uh, De Quinn basically collapsed down the tunnel. Um, he used his massive axes to to slow his descent. Uh, uh, but inside that tunnel, you guys found a, it was like a cave where some dragon bones were laying around. Um, There's actually a kobold that was there that looked alive until its insides burst open uh, and these maggot-like bugs and beetles and all sorts of just creepy, ravenous bugs um, were coming at you guys. I handled them pretty easily. They were, they were kind of tough to squash because there were so many of them, but uh, uh, further into the cave you found the real the real threat down here was this, uh, this beetle-bodied, like, chitinous chest uh, with... Uh, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, like this hard body shell, and it's had the, the face of a vulture, and these large, like, hook-like hands that, uh, that were extremely sharp on the end, and it was scurrying around on the ceiling. Uh, luckily, I think it was Davos was able to at least follow it, um, and then it tried to drop down on Odaxi, but you barely managed to get out of the way from getting kind of torn open. Uh, fought back and forth, uh, a couple of blows, like, bouncing off of its really sturdy, uh, hide piece until, uh, DeQuinn, like, basically carves it open, um, uh, from the back. Uh, and then in return, is almost carved open by this hook horror, uh, but luckily, you know, he being the barbarian he is, was able to, uh, able to essentially, uh, survive attack that probably would have rendered a lot of you, uh, unconscious, to be quite frank. Um... But, uh, yeah, so you followed through uh, the rest of the tunnel and found another entrance that actually, um, after following it for probably like an hour or so, led you back up to the surface uh, and relatively close to the west of East Inn. Um, that's the end where Danica was staying before she was kidnapped uh, and then dragged halfway across uh, Icewind Dale for it to be sacrificed. Um, once you got in there, you, she was able to recover her stuff. Um, and she gave you guys the lantern uh, that revealed basically that there were elementals in the area. Uh, these chewingas <laughs> that you guys were hunting um, in hopes to find some sort of remedy to uh, Melandra's uh, wound that she has on her on her ribs. Uh, you guys were actually able to find the chewingas. They're there causing some chaos, um, unscrewing salt tops, uh, and just kind of generally running amok uh, with Davos' sleep spell, you were able to calm them, well, not calm them, put them to sleep, take them to a private room upstairs, wake them up, and then ask for their help. Um, and uh, from there, you uh, managed to persuade them, essentially, it kind of explained the affliction that was going on. They're very childlike creatures, so there's a little, little bit of a showmanship uh, on the party side to explain, to explain the injury. And, um, and after that, they gave you what you believe to be something that can help Melandra, as it's this potion that uh, it almost burns like uh, like alcohol when it goes down the throat, but immediately generates this very uh, subtle warmth throughout the body. Uh, but that was at nightfall, and uh, knowing it's too dangerous to travel, you guys decided to rest at the West of East Inn, uh, which I actually need to pull everyone over to, because I am just showing you guys the can the start page. I think this is where we're at. Oops. Um, yeah, so this is the west of East Inn. Uh, it's, it is essentially because they haven't rested yet. So it's still nighttime around, you know, 8, 9 o'clock probably. I don't know if there's anything uh, you guys wanted to try to accomplish before you went to bed. But that is where we left off. I think we also talked to the barmaid, and she told us about Sephic. Yeah, so, uh, not a barmaid. Her name is, uh, Hiln. She's a, an ex-bounty hunter. Um, so she just happens to be in the bar. Um, but, uh, yes, she, uh, was there. She was worried about Danica when Danica got snatched. Um, 
she believes that she uh, she knows who the killer is. This character named Sefik uh, Caltro, who works for a traveling merchant band. Um, it seems like anywhere he goes, um, and if there's someone who perhaps was supposed to be sacrificed, because certain certain some of the towns are sacrificing people uh, to Oriel to try and have mercy on them and this this terrible frost. Um, so if he believes somebody's side side uh, like skirted around that process, uh, then he he seems to to take out vengeance on them. Uh, and Danica, I think, was in uh, she was in East Haven, town to the east, but she's really more aloof than anything. I don't think she even knew what was going what was going on per se. But yeah, uh, any any other questions about? Yeah, um, we discussed that it was part of a Torga. Is that the merchant company that Suffix? Torg, yeah, right. is the merchant company. And the three towns that sacrifice people at East Haven, Brinchander, and Targos? Uh, yeah, that sounds like, uh, that sounds like a thing. I'll have to double check that for you, but I can't. I can look real quick. Yeah, that's cool. I was just nice from my session. Yeah. Yeah, that, and that's that's probably right. I think uh, I think I maybe even gave that to you in the local handout. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, where is my frost maiden? Yeah, so it's nighttime. Um, you guys have uh, have uh, the, the the place to yourself. You get rent a room, hang out, crash on the bar, whatever you would like to do. There's no lake near here that we discuss, right? There's yeah. no what? No water. Water? Water? Water to go fishing in. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, no, there's not a, a large body of water nearby. Uh, this is right at the crossroads between uh, several of the several of the bigger towns, Bryn Jander, East Haven, and um, Goodmead's back the other direction. So there is no water. Double check though, you guys should have a handout of Icewind Dale. So I'll triple check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it would, you have to keep going east to East Haven. Yeah, so you would know, of course, living here too, that these towns they they spring up around bodies of water to basically survive and fish off of them. So um, East Haven would probably be the closest one to uh, an actual major body of water. town or the bars dying down a little bit there's still a few people there drinking danica is uh discussing with the barmaid she's got like a broom in her hand and you can tell she's the barmaid's trying to like teach her how to sweep which you know seems a little strange but um, well i suppose we get some ruins for the night and the first light I'm sure Pop you'd want to get back to your master as soon as possible she's not my master but yeah you know we get back to her the better I mean kind of seems like your master she tells you what to do when you do it. She's my tutor. And so I see no difference. I'm not a slave if that's what you're wondering. I'm yeah, I'm not against getting nights or getting rooms, getting a night's rest here. Yes, I think that would be a good idea. Uh, none of us are hurt, actually. I'm the only one that's hurt, right? Well, mm. at not full HP, that's what I mean. Well, I mean, I did get a nasty cut from that uh, vulture-looking creature. But that's okay. Uh, 
the barmaid behind is just kind of looking at these this collective group of people standing here one's uh two of them are almost seven foot tall massive animalistic features uh of uh, a very nicely adorned paladin uh in and heavy armor plate armor and a uh I'm, are you are you wearing furs are you wearing like a hooded a hooded feature right davos yeah i look warm i think yeah. that's what i settled on <laughs> yeah <laughs> whatever whatever's warm uh hooded figure uh all discussing in the middle of the bar and she's well if you want if you want rooms they're available we've about uh i don't know two silver a night probably per room Yeah, I don't see a problem, but we did bring Danica back safely. Surely we could, I don't know, sleep in for the night so we can get away straight away in the morning. All right, you, you, you did bring Danica back safely. We appreciate that, but uh, if anything, you've probably bought me more trouble than, you, than you've helped me. But uh, I tell you what, we'll just make it one silver room then. I'll pull out. Um, poor Silver, I guess. Uh, is this enough? Uh, that, that'd that be plenty. Uh, the rooms are right up the stairs down there to, uh, to your left. Uh, just don't leave the room in worse shape than when you found it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I completely forgot you guys devastated that, that <laughs> northern room. We will not devastate our own rooms well. that we are in, but any other rooms that we stay in is not our fault. We often get accused because of our size, but it's not our fault. Well, that seems like a strange thing to say, but okay. Uh, if you're a seven foot behemoth with immaculate horns like me, you would understand. Okay. Speaking of immaculate. Shut up, pup. Um, <laughs> do you have any, like, oils or walrus oils that make things shiny? Uh, there's probably a bit of grease left from, uh, from the, from the meats we seared, seared earlier, but I don't think we have any oils, not, not here. Most oils come from the north. Um, we don't, we don't have too many here. I don't think grease will have the same effect. We could try it. On walrus, do you mind if we put some grease on your tusk? They're already grease. Not well, they're, well, they're not well looked after. Surely you wouldn't want a bit of grease on there. If you're sitting out, you can just smell it all day, and it might smell uh, good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want the with your advantage on smell too. You would just so be overwhelmed yeah. by the scent of <clears throat> meat yes, grease I, on your tusk the entire day. I think I'm. I think I'm okay. Thank you. And just like that, we have a title for the episode today: Meat Grease. Meat Grease Tusks. No. Oh, it's young. The, the session is young. The session is young. That's very true. I can't wait to see what uh, beetle you have for us today. Well, okay. Well, if you want some grease, uh, I guess I'll. Put it to the side and not throw it away. No, no, I don't want no grease. It's not good enough to be put on my horns. Um, thanks. I do appreciate the thought. Uh, yeah, big, things like that you're better off finding in like Brinshander or East Haven, uh, where they get uh, trade supplies uh, more often than us here. We just simple town at the crossroads. We eaten? I think we have. Uh, not today. I, probably, right? I mean, you guys. Oh, I am famished. I could eat. Oh, okay. Well, um, we're uh, not too much of a selection at this time of night, but I can go and 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 have the cook prepare some some something biteable. You what? What are you in the mood for? You got any knucklehead? Uh, I we should have something. Let me take a look here. We've got uh, what now? Kn kn knucklehead. The local fish. Loves that fish. Oh, fish. Fish, yeah. Fish sounds great. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Well, we've, um, let's see. Let me go take a look there. And she kind of goes back and she goes, Oh, I've got a couple of meatballs left. Uh, it's ground knucklehead trout with uh, some oats and goat cheese uh, cooked in a cranberry sauce. But we're out of cranberry sauce, so it's just cooked. Ew. They couldn't fish around in his belt. <laughs> no oh. berries left. Uh, what, what berries do you have? I don't know. I found them in the wilderness. They oh. tasted pretty good, and I didn't get sick from them. So, but hares don't like them. The rabbit didn't want to come and eat them, but I ate them, and they were pretty good. I put them in the stew, and the stew turned out all right. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, well, we won't be adding any mystery berries to our 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 meatballs, but uh, you're welcome to put them in your own order if you'd like. Be two so copper per out, two copper per serving. I'll take two uh, servings. Oh, wow. Okay. <clears throat> Are you sure you want two servings? Oh, four, four servings, huh? And uh, we've also got... Uh, uh, looks like a little bit of chowder left. Um, mostly, uh, it's also it's also knucklehead trouts. And, uh, and a seaweed broth uh, that we had uh, that someone... Uh, came through from East Haven and brought. Uh, it's, it's pretty. It's pretty good. Give if me you, the chowder instead of the meatballs, or did you want both? Both. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, that'll I'll be uh, both for me as well. Oh my! You guys are a hungry <laughs> lot. <just> gonna <laughs> a hungry lot. Of food. <laughs> Am I the only one who's gonna eat just one serving? <laughs> no. It's very hard to come by a hot meal around these places, but get it while you can. I'm so in for the soup. It's, uh, so sweat, sweater weather. Sweater weather? So that's <laughs> th three three chowders and four meatballs. Uh, Pup, did you want anything, if that's your name? It, it's not. My, my name's Caro. Um, I'll take some chowder, thank you. Okay, four chowders, four uh, meatballs coming up. You can make yourselves at home, of course. She's going to kind of walk to the back of the, uh, right behind her and into the kitchen there. And that kind was of how much? Uh, two, so for yours would be five copper. Five copper for, it's one copper per chowder, two copper per meatballs. I want to remind DeQuinn that when she says make yourself at home, that she doesn't, like, actually mean that. It's prob probably best. As DeQuinn sitting there with his feet up on the table. That's probably you, fine. You kind of hear in the background a man's voice, Come on! What do you mean, four servings of meatballs? And there's, like, some pots <laughs> clanging in the back, and then the, the barmaid kind of returns. She goes, oh, That'll be right up. Just one moment, please. Shuts the door behind her. <laughs> it's like a clanging in the back. Uh, hey, sorry, but I can't move my token. You're well, stuck. Well, that oh, sounds fake. like sounds like a personal problem, dear. Fake Carol. <laughs> oh, did I uh, give it to fake Carol? Let's see here. I think you gave it to the fake Carol. <laughs> I can't move your token either. Oh, I'm on the wrong level. That's why. Permission has been revoked. You have been replaced. <laughs> there we go. I'm now like a war force or something. You now have permission After to move your token. Meters, turn left. <laughs> 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 oh, I hope one of our characters dies. That's got it. Whoever dies first has to make that character. <laughs> Planning oh. player deaths already. Can you move now or no? No. No, I'm dragging and nothing's happening. Oh my goodness. Are you gonna... on the select? Um, the yeah. Oh, I, I did the wrong one. I'm sorry. I, I gave you control of Danica. That's why. Oh, she's the worst. Let's leave her. <laughs> she's staying anyway, right? She's staying. Yeah. yeah. She. You get the impression that she now works here. She knows um, how to sweep. What else can we do for her? You know, she, she works here because the, the Chewinga she she met here uh, and that essentially kind of changed her life. And so she's she's kind of walking around holding the broom in her hand, but looking in every like little corner for like her little friends again. <laughs> um. She was gonna. She's, she's gonna be a terrible employee. 
Uh, hi, guys. Hi, guys. I can, move her. I can move myself. Back at it. All right. Uh, I, a couple minutes go by, and, and you can see kind of the uh, the barmaid kind of erupts back, and she's got all this just these platters of of um, meatballs Chow and up. chowder. Uh, and she 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 lays them at your table. It's pretty good. I mean, Odaxi, it's better than anything you saw in Dugan's Hole. Um, De Quinn Davos, you guys have been around a lot of the cities. It's it's, it's average. It's good. I've come to appreciate a hot meal. I'm eating with my hands. Even the uh, chowder. Oh. You you mean you tell me you just didn't just shove that trunk in there and just, you know. Well, no, bringing the bowl up. Dude, can you oh, imagine okay. burning your trunk? <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> oh. Walrus, man. Do we have to, like, submerge you in water? Or, like, how do you breathe? I'm not a walrus. Like a walrus? You sound like a walrus. <laughs> I have not corrected <laughs> no. you up until now, but I am not a walrus. Might, a I ask how, might I ask how many walruses you heard talk? Just this one. That's why it's so amazing. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Minotaur friend. Maybe DeQuinn's never actually looked in the mirror, and he doesn't know how animalistic he looks. I, I could see that being true. I, to be honest, I don't even know I'm a minotaur. <laughs> you actually probably don't. Nope. <laughs> Oops. Secrets out. D&D Beyond question. How do I spend money? Uh, you go to equipment, click on the currency, and then it should open up, and you should be able to, like, mm, drop, like, increment or dick or decrease it yeah i tried to decrease it by five copper and it's not won't do conversions for you oh you have to all right <laughs> oh, god it just you know what handling money is just as tedious in D D as it is in real life it really is especially if you can't count so the food warms you guys fills your fills your belly as you're Sitting around, the last few patrons kind of sort of like dwindle out. Um, the barmaid walks back by and goes, "Well, I'll be retiring to my room. Um, you've got your you've got your keys, and you're welcome to stay down here as long as you like. Just don't break anything. If there's an emergency, uh, feel free to come wake me. And uh, if uh, if I don't see it again, I'll see you in the morning. I doubt it. Good night. Oh, okay." Strange thing to say to someone. I wasn't <laughs> hearing. <laughs> Our home <clears throat> was a very wrecked. Uh, Pop. I'm not gonna carry this all the way back to your uh, master. No. Hand over the pot of uh, healing liquid. To I think. I thought I had poured that into a water skin and was holding on to that. I did, yeah. Never mind. I'm licking the pot. I left... I slammed the bowl down. Uh, a little slam just because of how I move around. Oh. But not, not rudely. <laughs> not, uh, and not I, I leave another I leave an, another copper on the table as a tip. Okay. I, I take the copper. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Uh, if you lick the pot... I guess I'm not familiar with the customs around here. I mean, After I already you... got a taste of it and gave me, like, a warm belly feeling. Yeah, so now that you've, like... It's kind of that same... You know that, like, mild burn after you have something that's spicy? It doesn't, like, it doesn't hurt, but it's, like, that, that weird, like, singeing around your lips, kind of. Uh, you kind of now feel that all over your mouth and, like, down your esophagus. But you're already kind of warm, too, from the chowder, so, you know, it just... It all, it all matches. I'm in heaven. It is nice. You've stayed in some. You've stayed in some. Some. Some not so great conditions. <laughs> well, shall we retire? I think so. 
Tara's not even halfway through her chowder. <laughs> <laughs> Are you eating it like uh, like super super proper and like uh, and with like all the etiquette etiquette that you're? I imagine with? I imagine I'm the only one at this table who does have table manners. She's got like a napkin tucked into her her plate mail. That'll change. I can imagine that every single time we bump the table, like a Daxi and um, Dequin is just constantly bumping the table. Oh She's yeah, like... you guys can't even like <laughs> turn without like well, one of I your. I couldn't. I, I actually sat on this side of the table because I couldn't fit between the wall and the table on the other side. So. <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of shoving Caro down a little bit, but not too uh, aggressively. She's in the air at the moment, suspended in the air. <laughs> well. Unless there's something else you guys want to accomplish tonight, uh, you guys have a, a, a great night's rest. Uh, it's warm, cozy. We'll switch over. I can switch to uh, the second row just so everyone can see it because it's a very, it's a really pretty map. This one. The long rest then. Uh, yeah, a long rest. Correct. Let me slide everyone over here, uh, and I will post all the map credits and music credits and everything like that at the uh, once I upload to YouTube, and I'll add it to the description. But it's a pretty map. So you guys can pick which rooms you want. Uh, I would say you guys have the option of any of the small rooms that don't have double beds and someone. You guys actually probably did hear a slight uh, squeal um, when you were down there eating. The uh, the barmaid got to her room, which is the master at the at the top up here. <laughs> which you guys absolutely ravaged. Yes. We paid for that room. We paid for it. Yeah. I uh, told her it was us. But uh, the night, night goes by calmly. No incident. No, like I said, some of you, it's Caro. For you, it'll be a, a really good rest since you've had all that travel and then the chaos of the of the first encounter. Um, and you know, for all of you sleeping in. Uh, <clears throat> in Dugan's hole that night was it was a really cold night this is a lot warmer and more comfortable and it's it's nice you pro most of you pass out probably immediately unless there's something you want to do in your room in the privacy of your room nope. uh i wanted to uh, also my token's not here um i think you can actually slide it we from have a your name. broken oh so if you go to the second one it's characters and then you just find your find a Daxi. Second just, one, what? Uh, from like, the uh, roll twenty, top right, it's like chats. The first one, and the second one is uh, uh, what's it called? Journal. And then. Yeah. Oh, I see. And so. Okay. Um, that. we had a broken carapace from the mm -hmm. the creature. I think two pieces. Can right? I can I use men one was broken and one was okay. Okay. If I remember, can I use mending? to repair the other one i don't think mending works on organic material but you want to post the spell in the chat sure i'll just roll it but not yeah know. that's fine it's, it's a it's a cantrip so let's see uh leaking wine skin oh wine skin's probably organic no longer than one foot um i would say yeah you were probably able to uh to seal up um the the pieces you 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 would you would be able to yeah if you do or not I guess that's up to you so I shouldn't probably should uh, tell you what you're doing just yeah. so we have yeah I mean I was thinking about it and better have to, better to have two complete pieces than one broken and one not I think DeQuinn has them both so you'd have to uh, chit chat with him De DeQuinn may I, may, I, may I enter <laughs> hold on I'm I'm indecent. <laughs> So you took off your loincloth? What do you what, what do you wear anyway? <laughs> That's it. No, no, his horn just has a speck of dirt on it. Exactly. <laughs> he took his horns Shut off. It. Both of his horns are like laying. They're not not real horns. They're just laying on the floor. <laughs> yeah, I'll open the door up and I got like the sheet wrapped around my horns because I don't want him to see it. <laughs> you have the, you have the, the shell the carapace from the creature that we slew. Right? Yeah, I tore them off. They're mine. What do you want? One was damaged, was it not? Too good. I should I should be able to repair it. 
using no. transmutation. It's better to have two complete pieces than one broken, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah, okay. Pull it out of sitting on the floor. Uh, here you go, Walrus. Hand All right, he, hand, he hands it to me, and uh, I'll close my eyes and <laughs> touch, hold, hold the, hold on to the care pace and and channel transmutation magics and and repair it. Yeah, so uh, you know, transmutation is the, the class of magic, right? And it's, right, spell is called mending. How do you want to? Do you want to like? Do you want to add any flavor to it, or you just want to like you know kind of cast cast a uh, that's, that's kind of it. it. You just I just hold okay. hold it with open palm, and uh, yes, and cast mending. Yeah, the, so you can kind of feel it's it's got. Um, it feels like it'd be brittle, but it's not, and it, because it's kind of pliable too, that's probably where it gets some of its strength because it, it you know it, it can give a little under impact. Um, and as you hold it and cast mending, um, it's a slower process because uh, mending you know typically is for smaller items, and this. This is a bigger, this is a bigger piece, but you can kind of slowly like stitch together um, the, essentially the crater that DeQuinn left when he, you know, when he nailed it with his great axe, and all of you beat it with blunt instruments except for DeQuinn, uh, and it just kind of slowly stitches together, and as far as you can tell, it looks like it's a whole piece again. I'll I'll hand it back to DeQuinn. There you go. Oh, I'm going to give you every pelt. That I mangle up, and you can do this, yeah. We're gonna be business partners. All this. We're gonna sell so many things. It's wonderful. Uh, yes, would, yes, would, I see. Would you like it? Do you want it? You fixed it. You can have it. Uh, hold on to it. I don't know what 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 use it'll have yet, but I'm sure we'll find something. Might make a good hat for you. A hat, mm. maybe. <laughs> Till tomorrow. Sleep well, Loris. Our walrus. Good night. <laughs> you hear as you as you kind of walk away in the background. You're a walrus. <laughs> Isn't that like, <laughs> like a bubbling? Song? Like I'm the walrus. I'm the walrus. <laughs> I'm the egg. I'm the Eggman. Cuckoo, cuckoo. I don't think I have the right to that music. You've got. No, you got to say fantasy, fantasy Beatles. It's the Fantasy Beatles. <laughs> yeah. V- popular Some... traveling band in Waterdeep. <laughs> okay. uh, Caro, uh, I return to my room, which is okay. the one with its green bed. Uh, is there anything else uh, anyone wants to do before before turning in for the night? Just say my prayers and head to bed. Okay. I'm just going to sleep. All right. Well, with that, uh, cue. Uh, the sundial, you know, speeding up and becoming uh, becoming morning. Let's see. Uh, morning is different for for you, Caro and uh, Odaxi, than you're quite used to because of the because of whatever entity is uh, is affecting the Icewind Dales right now. Whatever the Frost Maiden's magic is, um, time it's very dark often, and so. Uh, you will know that at like about 7 a.m., which is morning, as you guys are starting to kind of stir awake, is you're just starting to see some light kind of peer. And again, it's very muffled or muted light. It's not. It's not like a bright. You, there's no clear like sun that you can see without any cloud cover. Um, and so you guys know that like this starts a very. You have a very small window for being able to use daylight to your advantage. So uh, it's, it's it's somewhere between like you know like six seven hours of daylight and then it becomes dusk and dark like at 4 p.m kind of like it is now for like for some of us in daylight saving times i feel like but right um but you got a very narrow window and then after that it there's no there's no real um uh evening or morning it's just like it goes from light to dark pretty quickly uh so uh but morning does come shines kind of brightly uh or in your window and uh it is now the next day so you guys all have uh your full rest all your you get Half your hit die back if you used any in the in yesterday or last session's encounter, and um, it's a new day in beautiful Icewind Dales. 
Where, where do you get half your hit die back? What, what yeah, so you know how you have you had two hit die that you, if you used one after like a short rest in the cave? Um, oh, yeah. Okay. So the mechanic, short is, rest thing. the yeah. mechanic is whenever you long rest, you can get half of whatever you used back. So that way you can't, you could, in an attempt to not really game the system and just be able to like take short rest all the time. They, you know, if you use hit die, they, they diminish half the rate as you earn them or as you use them. Okay. That makes I got sense. it. Um, so just something to keep up with. Um, but yeah. And I did figure out spell pep- preparation, so I'm good to go. Cool. For today. You're technically still level two in the game, but you know, we'll, oh, we'll fudge it. Well, we'll, we'll fudge it. <laughs> I'll just say, as yeah, long okay. as you guys don't go down there and start trying to fight my barmaid, you should be in pretty good shape. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's up to Dick Quinn. I know. And, well, she might want to fight you once she gets her room back in order. The bed's only only one leg snapped. That's fine. <laughs> God. Um, um, we don't, we have limited use of daylight, so. We should go. I think I'd probably be prepared with DeQuinn knowing how things go up here. Yeah, you know as soon as you feel the slight ray of sun, it's time to get on with it because uh, it's going to it's gonna fade quickly. Mm-hmm. Mostly, and it's not always the light that's the problem. The temperature drops, too. Like, so once you start to lose what little light you have, you're talking about, you know, 20 degrees, uh, you know, d- dropping every hour, every hour and a half, so... Uh, get breakfast <laughs> or no time grab <laughs> something on the way yeah I would, I would say get your your bagged lunch we do i go. smell any baked goods downstairs <laughs> you you smell very similar to uh what you had last night you smell a very fishy uh fishy aroma coming from the the place below I guess I can transfer you guys there, so I'll just bring you guys down. Unless anyone wants to do anything up here, we can always just do it in our minds. So. Yeah, I don't. I Bam. just want my tea. <laughs> Back at the table. Uh, the the bar's still kind of empty. I you know I'm not going to kill all the tokens here for the effect of <laughs> storytelling, but uh, not too many people have wandered in quite yet. Uh, Danica's up. The barmaid's back behind. She's kind of giving you guys a really dirty side eye. Um, And you can see Danica is... uh, She's kind of walking around and rearranging all the chairs again. And every time she rearranges one, she looks under it and then puts it back in spot. And she goes over to the fireplace and tidies up that area to the north. And she, like, gets on her hands and knees and looks up the fireplace. Just kind of whispering to her. Here, little guys, where are you? <laughs> oh, good morning to you. Did, did, did you? Taro nearly runs up to the bar. Oh, what's uh, what can I do for you? Ma'am, she, you got any, you got any tea? Um. No, 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 dear. Not a lot of tea in this part. Um, uh, most oh. people, most people prefer our 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 morning our, our, our brown morning potion that we have here. Um, brown morning <laughs> potion. It's a uh, what? It's, what is that? It's a it's it's a it's a, a strong warm brew that we <laughs> looks a bit like dirty water, but it's uh it's it's made from these uh these beans that we harvest from. Uh, from, from from different areas that we can find them, we have to buy some of them from uh, East Haven mm-hmm. or or Prince Shander. But it's a it's a bitter tart liquid that's uh, it'll, it'll perk you up a little though. We'll take four to go. To go? Well, we don't really offer to go services here. We'll Just... take four to go. Okay. Uh... I can down one right now. Trust me. Okay, well, uh, for each of you, that'll be uh, that'll be another copper, and for the big man with the horns, it'll be five copper. I know what you did which, to my room. Which big man with the horns? Racist? <laughs> <laughs> no, your friend over there. Uh, ah, that queen. Yeah, he uh, did a little a once over on my room uh, yesterday. It looks like. You have to say for yourself. 
You're muted in case you're talking. Oh, I'm very upset that you called me out on this. This is... I don't believe it. I was in my room the whole time. The whole time? It was yeah, you... Sorry? The right whole here. time you are in your room? You didn't ha maybe take a um, meander over to my room before that and flip the bookshelf and open the window and let all the heat out? I'm appalled! Why would I do that? What reason would I, the Quincidge of the Uftar clan, Black Raven tribe, would do that? I don't bloody exactly. know. You're crazy is what it sounds like to me. Um, Make a deception check, Dequin. This is definitely my strong suit. <laughs> I, offer no gu I offer no guidance. She doesn't even... You, you're like the world's worst liar. You're looking like above her and off to the right some. Not even making eye contact and like twiddling. You can like hear... Here, DeQuinn, like, you know, kind of, like, tapping his foot against the bottom of the counter. She just kind of eyeballs you, hands you your brown morning potion, and goes, That'll be five copper. I didn't want any. Hm. Fine. And she reaches out, and she drinks it herself. It's gonna have to poop. <laughs> <laughs> that is a side effect of the potion, yeah. It's, uh, it's just a possible status effect. Needing to poop. Alright, let's go. Get them poured. Uh, they're, they're poured, and she hands them to you. She gives you, like, the all, like, really crappy uh, cups. Uh, <laughs> the closest thing she has to a to-go cup, just cups that she can't really use. Uh, you even kind of see, like, it may be, like, slightly leaking a little out of the bottom, just because, you know, it's it's, it's got a hole in it, but... It's fair. This is fair. I'm gonna get it. I was just gonna, like, hold it with two fingers just down it okay yeah it's it's not tea you know it's it's obviously uh you know coffee flavored and it's not good coffee it's it's kind of trash but uh it's something warm and something caffeinated so it's it's something similar to what you're used to i'm gonna go to Danica and say i saw some chimichangas up in that uh lady's room <laughs> She doesn't even need a deception Sowing check. The seeds of <laughs> she, she doesn't even need a deception check because she just doesn't. She like she hears you say, "Chewingas," and she just goes, oh, uh, um, uh, "I'm gonna go clean upstairs." And she just drops the broom and then runs upstairs. And the barmaid kind of goes, "What? What? Take the broom! Take the broom!" And she just runs off and doesn't come back down. Maybe she's going to wipe the windows or something. That girl. Wouldn't even know how to operate a window if, if uh, someone wasn't around to help her. Alright, team. Let's go. We're burning daylight. Alright, you guys... I'll also just down mine. I don't want to carry it with me. Okay. You leave the to-go cups on the table. So you guys are heading back... Uh, Let's see, I'll pull up a map for everyone just so they can see it. Are right, heading back? Ooh, that's not it. West uh, towards Goodmead, correct? So yes. You are, correct. You guys are like right about here. I'm talking to chat more so than you guys. So right at this four way uh, of the east ways that connects like uh, Carnival, East Haven, Bryn Shander, and Goodmead. Um, you know DeQuinn and Davos. It is about a. Um, uh, four hour journey uh, on foot to get to back to where you are uh, to Goodmead. So, uh, you know, taking off now. Now's, now's prime time to travel. There's some daylight. It's warmed up a little bit. Uh, the weather seems to be somewhat stable for once. Um, so, uh, if, if, uh, if you guys want to head that direction, just kind of let me know who's in charge or who's leading the way and, uh, and then <coughs> just roll a d20 for me. I mean, I got us lost last time, but I'm happy to lead the way. Yeah, I think you should. That sounds fine. Sounds fine now. Wait till we get off. <laughs> roll a d20 I mean, and uh, roll, just roll a survival check is fine. 
I don't remember. I don't think you had advantage on any. You have advantage on something with survival, I think, but I don't remember what it was. Collecting like stuff. Okay. Unless someone was trying to help me through this navigation. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. I do have I'm familiar. Uh, it is. It is literally you just following a road. So the the DC couldn't have been lower. <laughs> thank God, probably. Uh. For you to complete this task uh you guys start to see that uh every now and then he'll he'll start to kind of drift off see something in the distance it's kind of like like almost like when you're walking a dog and it like refuses to look in the direction it's going um and he just kind of meanders but davos kind of to quinn here uh, uh, nope 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 and you snap him out of it and he kind of goes back to the trail um and so you guys make your way uh to good mead without any serious issue Thank God. You, had... really you have me as your leader, uh, leading this group. Otherwise, you would have got lost. <laughs> Tara's going to be keeping a lookout for her horses. Okay. Yeah, make sure you look long and hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, uh, yeah, I was going to say, I would say roll a perception check, but it's just rude to make a roll a perception check because they're not anywhere nearby. Uh, uh, has, <laughs> has that been filled in yet? <sighs> the what? <laughs> Oh, the Possible horse situation? The yeah, she she messaged okay. me the day after the session went live. <clears throat> uh, so <laughs> The possible fate of the horses. Yeah, possibly. You know, who knows? Um, so, uh, so, no, you don't see any, you don't see any uh, wildlife, especially this close to, like, a well-traveled road. You get the sense that, you know, most things would avoid this area since they're avoiding people. Uh, but in the distance, after about four hours, maybe a little more, because DeQuinn got sidetracked a few times, um, you guys see in the distance the town of Goodmead. Um, Goodmead is uh, it's it's bigger than Dugan's Hole. Uh, Davos, DeQuinn, like I said last a couple of sessions ago, you guys know D Dugan's Hole, where you first was. It's probably the smallest of the ten towns. Goodmead's a step up. Um, it's actually kind of cool because it's it's actually has like a wooded area around it, which is pretty rare out here in the Ten Towns. Good Mead, you guys would also know, to Quinn and Davos, having been in this area, is that it they brew, and they're known for uh, uh, their honey mead that they sell and ship to all the other towns. And as you guys get closer, it seems kind of odd, but you can hear and see the buzzing of bees all around the town, and and coming in and out of the wooded area to the back. From the direction you guys are coming from, there's a good meets position actually right on the red water. So uh, to Quinn, you're now back uh, in back in an area near a big body of water. The red waters are where the Dugan's Hole and uh, Goodmead both do their fishing. Uh, and you can see some boats out in the distance uh, out there and some of them are getting close. And you can actually see they're getting a little too close sometimes, and the one boat seems to almost ram the other. They're fighting for prime fishing locations. Um, Davos and DeQuinn, you guys know that it's called Red Waters because of all the blood spilled over fishing rights in this in this uh, part in this watery uh, watery lake of sorts. Uh, like lake. There's not too many people walking around good meat as you guys walk through. There's to your left uh, a couple of houses, not too terribly not too terribly big, but you know maybe two three bedroom houses along the lakeside, a little patch of green area, and uh, you can see the people that are out seem to be heading south towards uh, towards a large building right off the the lakefront. And Is it possible to the bees? Like the Quinn's like just telling bee facts to everyone. Just, did you know bees uh, actually have spoon feet and they can only carry uh, <laughs> one of the two things at the same time? They can't carry pollens and nectar at the same time. They can only carry one at the same time. And that's actually how they make honey. Is they take it back to their hives and it just goes on and on and on. Fascinating. Quite knowledgeable about the bees. Yeah, how are you so? How is De Quinn so knowledgeable about bees? He got stung by one. <laughs> and then did endless research <laughs> to, to try and prevent it from happening again. The shaman taught me about the bees, the birds, and the bees. Oh. <clears throat> are you afraid of bees, Minotaur? I'm not afraid. 
PvP. No, they're they're essential for actual um, for growth of plants and fruits around. That yes, world. yes, yes. We all know the facts. <laughs> <laughs> you guys see a couple more people. Actually, they they turn the corner in front of you. Uh, as there's like on to the left of you and to the right, there's these rows of just houses, and two people kind of burst out of of the house, and they start they start to run past you towards towards this large structure in the south of town. As you run by, you guys, oh, I haven't seen a good fight in years, and then they just take off. Um, um, I haven't seen anything exciting in a long time, so I am well. <laughs> Not the hook horror that cave. dropped down from the cave yeah, and tried to yeah. slice you open. <laughs> Nothing yeah, exciting about. Everyday nonsense. <laughs> we've been we've been up here for a long time. Uh, I'm interested in that. I would want to go see what they're all going to look at. I mean, I'm interested, but don't we have pressing concerns? Someone with a mortal wound. Thank I mean, you. I mean, I don't care. Do the voice like of reason. Fight? I mean, I don't care. Let's let's go to a fight. Oh my god, I'm going to smite you. I think we could we could earn some money here. It's a good bet to be made. We could split up. You guys can go enjoy a fight, and we'll go take care of our mortally wounded friend. Um, no, 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 we need them. We need them. I, I don't know this place. I don't know this place. It's, it's, too much snow. About what time is <laughs> Too it? Too much snow. Uh, four hours on seven, so about okay. eleven a.m. So it's still, still have about <laughs> what, five hours of daylight. And what's um, the journey back to Dugan's Hole? Another four hours. Dugan's Hole is gonna be. Uh, it is about four hours. Yeah. How fast is it on horse? Uh, on <laughs> horse, you'd probably be able to half that time. And are there horses around, as a follow-up question, hypothetically? Uh, in the immediate vicinity, you see no horses or horse stables. Uh, and you know horses are pretty rare up here. Uh, it would be dog sleds or a common, or common form of transportation or axe beaks. Uh, dog sleds. What do, what do have, what's our dog sled availability? Uh, For a taxi, you know, I... Not... <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, they're pretty strong. Power. Yeah, you'd have to, uh, you'd have to probably get extra sleds for those two. Uh, but do you, the place, you, the place to find out that information, if there's even any available, would be uh, the local inn or uh, Mead Hall and, and the, whatever, like you know, inn structure is in each town. Uh, having been, having probably been to Good Mead maybe once in your travels, you guys mostly stayed up north or. Uh, you'd know that there is a there is a large mead hall, mead hall, uh, and that would be the best place to inquire about dog sleds or anything of that nature. Um, no, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's just get back. Kara, what's your passive perception? Ten. Okay. Roll, roll. Let's let's do an active check. Roll, roll, roll. Perception check um, for me. Worse. Okay. Yeah. Worse. We are quiet tonight. I'm just too busy glaring angrily at the Dakota Devils. <laughs> it's like you're considering not helping this, my. Tutor out! <laughs> Your master. We've done, done a considerable amount to make you give us a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. I mean, you are still here today because of us. And we've got this warm juice. That Davos S- is carrying. A small, a small yeah. child kind of, uh, well not small, maybe like a teenager or so, kind of runs up Uh-oh. to the south of you. <laughs> uh oh! Is that your natural reaction to people running at you? Yeah, I okay. uh, yeah. Okay, I don't like it. I'm uncomfortable. Good to know. <laughs> she kind of runs by. Goes, there's, hey, there's another one up here. Is this an invasion of some sorts? Another what? Invasion. Another one of th- another one of these. Another one of these folk, and she points past all of the 
eclectic looking characters and straight towards the heavily armored uh, Caro. Humans? What? I know she looks. She looks just like the other broad, chopping people up in the uh, in the south of town. Chopping people up. Tell me more. I I, I don't know. It's just uh, a a very angry woman wielding a wielding a large hammer, swinging it at the meat hall, cracking people's heads open. <clears throat> uh, Davos will will pull in. To, with just the core group here, and I'll say, guys, everything I know about women leads me to believe that we <laughs> should leave. <laughs> uh, I, I know Are you freaking about. kidding me? She's a hammer, and she's angry. We should go. You guys were right. We should leave. The Someone's in trouble. <laughs> someone's in trouble, and I'm not just going to leave them like that. This sounds fishy as hell. Yeah. Oh, I could go for a fish right now. Fish down. <laughs> yeah, you wanna go fishing, Davos? <laughs> I like no, turn no, to the. No. I like turn to the girl. Yeah. I'm just like, young lady. Um, whereabouts did you say this was happening? Uh, first of all, I ain't no lady, and second of all. <laughs> oh, sorry. Someone said she. she. I know. She's just. She she's. Uh, that's just. I don't know. She's just not a lady. Yeah, she just I'm doesn't consider herself a lady. A lady. Uh. I don't know, guys. Uh, I should stop <laughs> using. I should stop using so many female characters. I don't know how to RP as any of them. But, just just uh, know her pronoun, all right? <laughs> okay. Because uh, she's at the meat hole. Well, it's called the meat hole. Mead. That could. Oh. <laughs> Even better. Nope. <laughs> Not being the name of the session. <laughs> no. I would say, all right, all right. Let's uh, let's go check that out then. <clears throat> As you guys get closer, you can hear. She sounds pretty determined here. You can hear even even from where you are. I just I, I, the the rustling kind of intensifies, uh, and there's some shouting and some profanities being thrown around. The mead hall, mead hall. <laughs> to be very clear, what I keep saying. <laughs> Uh, is here. So let me slide you guys down here. And updates. Oh, <laughs> someone's having a, a Mountain Dew. Uh, it's a fantasy energy drink. Mountain Dew's been cracked. So I dropped you guys here. As you guys come around this this large structure in the front, you can see what looks like uh, just this massive set of bones kind of uh, over overcasting the entrance. And out in the front, right as you guys turn the corner, you see this just this figure get launched out of the entrance to the hall and eat the and eat in the snow. And stands up, starts pointing and swearing. I look here, bitch, you throw you lay one hand on me again and I'll cut your head off. I'm gonna run up to the fence and yell, Yeah, do it. You won't <laughs> kinda of turns <laughs> looks, looks over his shoulder, he's like uh, oh, I will! I, I I will! I'll do it! Do it! <laughs> do I can speak louder than words, boy! <laughs> Another man comes, like, stumbling out and spinning around, and you can see they're, like, cracking their knuckles. And then, uh, from the entrance, in a very pronounced, uh, sort of, uh, sort of t manner, you see... If I can change the layer... A familiar-looking figure in uh, heavy plate mail with uh, with uh -oh. blue with blue uh, robes over her. It's kind of, she's just kind of dragging the hammer like, like along uh, the ground of the entrance there and into the snow, and she kind of looks up at these two, grasping her side a little bit because it's just uh, kind of like leaning to one side using her warhammer as a prop. Should have went fishing. Uh, so you guys see. The image of Paladin Melandra. Carol, what's going on? I'm immediately suspicious. She's just like she's like staring with her jaw drop. Melandra like goes to like she takes more steps towards these guys, and even though you guys you were behind them, like yeah, you won't fight, you won't. You're trying to egg them on. Uh, there's clear fear in uh, in their in their stance and they're quivering, and they kind of like start to like back up even as she pushes forward towards them 
and as soon as she sees uh, the group of you behind, she immediately starts to like take off at a dead sprint past these two idiots, and uh, and right in front of Caro, and she kind of looks you up and down, and then grabs you and squeezes you real tight and close together. She's attacking her. We have to save her. <laughs> Defensive formation. It's okay, so now she's over at Caro. Yeah, I'll move her real quick here. It's Caro. I, I didn't know what happened. I, we woke up one up the next morning and my horse had come back and yours wasn't here. I don't. I just assumed the worst. I put on my armor, rode my horse out to this direction to see if I could find any more information. These town folk, and she turns around and spits on the ground at them, said that you guys hadn't even passed through here yet. And frankly, so I suspect that they were lying. What? You just decided to start smashing their heads in? I love this woman. Well, to to be to be frank, they weren't being very helpful. They were claiming that you hadn't passed through here, and then they started making uh, rather mm, inappropriate uh, gestures towards me, and I frankly felt like I could, uh, they needed to be taught a lesson. Well, um, we didn't exactly pass through here. We under, kind of passed under, under here? here. Under here? Uh, if this is another attempt for me to say underwear, Caro, it's under not going to work. It passed under there. <laughs> there there's, there was tunnels and stuff. Like, tunnels with, like, bugs and, like, a big... I think what kind of thing? Trying to say is we got lost in a blizzard and took shelter into a cave, and then the cave led to uh, around this place. But you, you guys are all okay, except the horse. We're, I think. Great. I'm sorry, horse is unknown. I'm sorry, Carol. Only, only my horse returned, and that's what I fear the worst. I didn't know if. Perhaps you released it, or got separated, or... Voluntarily separated? Would well, be the right term? The important thing is that you're okay. That's all that really matters. Can I just uh, go, like, turn to Odak to just, like... You, you have the, the thing, the thing. Yes, we have a... We have a... Concoction to cure your juice. wounds. A concoction? We should go inside. Or a salve. We should go inside, yeah. <laughs> and catch up, it's cold. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Are you still allowed in this establishment? Of course I am. Why wouldn't I be? <laughs> and she, like, turns and she's walking back up. You can see she's limping a little bit. It's noticeable now to everyone um, that she's almost using her hammer more as, like, a walking stick than really as, like, a weapon. Um... And the two th two men sitting outside in the snow just kind of stare her down and watch her walk back in. She like stops and looks at them for a second, and then continues to like walk up into the inside of the meat hall. Which I just gets past them by, just like I am so sorry. Uh, keep your keep your pet on a leash. Pretty mighty <clears> game token, <throat> big when there's a minotaur in it. <laughs> Did she, well, they're not next to their friend. <laughs> did she say? Wait, were they were they getting mouthy with our our people? They were they were mouthy towards Caro. That is true. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I for sure cast infestation on them, but I want just like fleas. I want some nuisance bug. <laughs> <laughs> you sneakily cast it, and they don't notice. Uh, out of the out of the snow at their feet, what looks like. If almost like snow was coming up from the ground instead of down, these little white, uh, these little white bugs start to like jump on them and bite their leg, and you can see one of them kind of smack, smack it at first, and they don't really pay any attention to it, and another is, and then they're like, ah, hey, ah, hey, oh shit, and then they just start taking off in the direction. <laughs> you can see they're like taking off their clothes as they run, um, and then they die from. The damage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the don't know what the damage is for that. Uh, it's a D six. Okay, they'll be fine, but they have very awkward. But they die bumps. from the cold. Yeah, they die from the cold for sure. Uh, inside the meat hall, uh, it's it's what you guys see here in front of you. It's it's a very uh, open space, lots of tables. Um, 
uh, you can see the there's some ta chairs knocked over uh, to the right where perhaps uh, the scuffle sort of started. Um, the a, a, a dragonborn uh, character kind of approaches you from the north uh, northwest here. He goes, "All right, look, you come back in and you try that again. I'm gonna have to throw you out. You're lucky. I think they're both a bunch of pervs, anyway." Uh, I think they'll check me out. I wasn't Do I recognize talking. this dragonborn. Uh, no. Well, okay. it's a female. It's a female dragonborn. Uh, white. She's actually uh, missing her left arm. You can see the cloak kind of like hangs uh, loosely uh, in that in that area. Um, so no, nothing. Don't recognize her particularly. Yeah. Um, not a lot of dragonborn in this area, so it's it's interesting to see one, uh, at least as, that you've seen so far, Odaxi. Um I would, I'd say we, we don't mean any trouble. We're we're just teaching some manners. Uh, and I'm pro teaching of manners. Let's not destroy the establishment in the process, young lady. And she kind of looks at Melandra, and Melandra gives her like a a courteous nod, still a little bit defiant, but uh, a nod nonetheless. Well, welcome to the Mead Hall, and uh, I appreciate you. Uh, Adding a bit of excitement to our uh, our day, although we've had enough excitement with, well, with the speaker dying and everything. Is this like, sword? yeah, sorry, I'll pull I'll pull her around here. Okay. Uh, I need to actually switch over. And she will come talk to you like a normal person here. There it's we my go. immersion. Um, please have a seat. Uh, we've. Running a little low on mead since it was stolen, but uh, we're trying to recover what we can as, as best we can. Stole, stolen? Somebody stole the mead? Something stole the mead, to be exact. Uh, we believe it was... Uh... You okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Okay. Good. Uh, we believe it was... a. Uh, 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 I'll pull up them so I don't pronounce it wrong here. A, uh, a Verbeeg Marauder. <clears throat> do I have any idea what that is? You do. Uh, you guys would both, uh, again, Davos and Quinn, the locals, you know that they're these, um, these almost giant looking, uh, entities. They're kind of like lesser giants in a way. They're overly sized, like humans with big, long arms, long faces, um, they're usually covered in their own hide armor of some sorts. Um, and they have spears, typically. Uh, but they, uh, they're they kind of like lawless giants in the air. They're, you know, seven, eight foot tall. Um, she continues. She goes, I, uh, we think a Verbeek uh, took it and made off with it to the south. But uh, a speaker went after it to try and recover, to recover what we could. And, well, we found his body essentially crushed and and speared his corpses down at the shrine uh, so not not the best of days for a good mead <clears throat> well uh, I, sorry uh, uh, my name is uh, God what did I make her name out would be real quick uh, my name is uh, Lyra Lyra Balseth uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, and um, this is my establishment. Please uh, have a seat and uh, make yourselves at home. Warm up a bit. And again, she looks back at Melandra. No more funny business. Did you say Balseth? I did. Are you in relation to y Yalmak? Does he owe you money? No, no, no. We're old friends. And I know the bastard. Is well, he think... around these parts? Uh, that's a great question. I haven't seen him in about a month now. He went north to uh, go, quote unquote, find some new ingredients for new recipes. Which she spits on the ground like a waste of time if you ask me. Why would you create a new recipe when you've already got one of the most popular drinks in the entire Tin Towns? You know... Yolmuk? 
Yeah, we traveled together for a time. I've not talked to him in many months. Oh, that makes sense. He did mention a large creature that tusk and, and everything. Well, <clears throat> I'm I am a Doxy. Oh, that does Maybe sound you've heard familiar. The name. That does sound familiar. Oh. Well, yeah, he's 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 out and about to the north. I you know last I checked, I, he said he's going to Bryn Shander and then and then further up. I haven't seen him in a while. <clears throat> Quite frankly, if you run into him, tell him he better not bring his ass home without a good excuse for being gone for so long. Uh, if we if we find ourselves in that area, I that I I have come up here and searched for him, but we have some other urgent matters for now. Oh, okay. Well, uh, well, sit, 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 and uh, let me go get uh, get everyone around, and um, and we can talk more about Yolmac or whatever urgent matters you guys have. And you guys see Melandra's kind of already making her way over, uh, over to sit down, and she leans back slowly and sits down with like a bit of a clank. She kind of collapses on the uh, on the on the, the bench here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, try to get her token out real quick. There it is. Oh. Do we want to administer first aid in the middle of the mead room or should we go somewhere? Yeah, was... <clears throat> so do you have a room that we can use? Uh, sure. I think, uh, not really sure. What's There's her name thing. again? Uh, Lyra. Lyra's my name. There's, uh, well, there's my room to the to the uh, left side over here, or to your right, and she gestures kind of over here. Um, but there's also uh, the stables in the back. I don't know quite what you need. Oh, we need you... we need to make sure our friend's okay, real quick. All right. And well, expose her. If you, so... oh, I'm sorry. So you'll have to take off some of her armor and then she'll feel a bit weakened so I think perhaps your room would best All right, be. just don't ramble through my stuff please I promise you that <laughs> she kind of looks you up and down and looks back at her daxi and points to him and goes he's in charge and then just kind of walks away so it's unlocked Touch. All right, let's go. I say uh, thank you to her. And move off uh, in draconic, <laughs> and she then we move off. She kind of pauses for a sec and smiles, although <clears throat> you can't see it with with your back to her. Uh, I haven't heard that in a while. I thank her in common. You're welcome, dear. Draconic. I don't even thank her. Yes, that's uh, exactly. Dequins. Dequins. Uh, his only quest is to piss off every bartender and barmaid <laughs> in the entire, in the entire ten towns. Yes. Everyone else is thinking it. I don't have to. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I see, Melanda goes um. and she sits on the bed and, Cato, come please, give me a hand. And she like lifts up and like, uh, like, barely like puts her arm up and gestures to like the straps for her armor. I'm going to help her right away. It probably takes a good, like, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes, even with help, to, like, completely uh, take take off heavy armor like that. But as you guys get it, uh, and you can see she has, like, a, a very nice, dirtier now, but very nice uh, undershirt kind of uh, under the armor. And she lifts it up, and you can see, like, her entire left, mid, uh, upper torso is now almost blue purple completely and um the it's almost like webbing because it, it it seems to be following the course of the veins and like slowly like freezing uh areas of the veins like up as it goes and works her way up her body um you can see that it's it's very tender um and as you even if you touch it caro you feel a very uh, uh icy cold um, skin and the skin's hard almost like you could chisel it off and you can see she's like laboring to breathe a little bit um, 
because like her her stomach to expand and not expand uh it's like doing so around this sort of infected area i would <clears throat> i would explain to her the potion that we've got and how we got it um and just kind of say we don't know that, that this will work and we don't know that it won't kill you but um we got this for you so we have to try something yeah i would just hand it to her and let her make the decision to drink it or not i've also been thinking about this and if with your permission i would like to call on well my ancestors to help with this she's kind of uh like leaning back against this like this bed piece now like using the like, pieces of the armor to prop her up and very confused look on her face as you guys tell her the story of how you chased down a fox and a small pine cone looking creature uh, that was on top of the fox and it pulled from a illusionary spa this potion that you want her to consume but uh, she she looks around and looks at Caro and then well if this potion doesn't kill me I suspect this frigid infection will so i am uh i am in a not in a position to make any demand so sure I, any anything you get you think will help will be much appreciated we hope it will uh do i have it no i, I handed it i handed okay. it okay okay Uh, she and, will... and how 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 is the Dequin how are your ancestors helping? Well Or is that just a, a saying? I there's a bit of a ritual that I wanted to go with you guys when we come back here, but we can use the potion first and then Actually, no. I'll pull a skin back over the iron pot. And as I lay down the, the makeshift drum onto the table, you can see like all the runes and all the tattoos on the Quinn light up blue. Now's not the time for your song. And then you see a shaman like figure sit in the seat next to it and start playing the drum. And then you see another figure behind Davos, like a very tall elf with a great sword. I'm not the one playing, Carol. Go ahead, drink your potion. We're gonna be here to help you. You see these like these, these sort of ethereal looking figures kind of shimmer, um, aware of the presence of everyone in the room. Uh, as they kind of sit, you know, in the chair and everything, and um, there's that, there's like a rhythmic, there's just the rhythmic beat of the drum kind of playing in the background, and Melandra kind of looks, and, well, I've seen crazier things, I suppose, and uncorks it and smells it, and you guys all kind of quickly smell, um, it smells almost like, uh, like, like a campfire immediately kind of fill the room, um, and uh, she turns, takes the, the water skin, turns it up, and kind of squeezes the bottom to try and get every last little bit out. And uh, as she does and pulls it from her mouth, there's like a, like a wisp of, of sort of just red um, red mist that comes from the potion. And um, it, it finds and kind of moves its way over to, to the character in the corner playing the drums and then wraps itself around... Uh, uh, the, his hands as he, as he hits the drums you can see Melandra kind of cough a bit and a little more of that like sort of red wisp comes out and uh, from from like her throat the exposed portion like that right above the shirt you can kind of see uh, color and like blood kind of flush to that area and as it works her way down down the chest and the exposed portion of the wound you can see almost like at this red this purplish sort of mix as the as 
blood flows back to these these blue frozen decrepit areas and slowly like someone's pulling it out of the wound itself this sort of once was blue webbing as it was in all of the veins kind of decreases and decreases slowly and more and, and just to the very edge of like the wound there's that that portion of skin that can never quite heal it kind of like seals itself up and as it does the very last little bit there's like this red wisp that just kind of floats off again and you can see her take a deep breath and actually her whole body this time reacts to it as the lungs fill the chest cavity again and there's like a sigh of relief and a little bit of sweat coming <laughs> coming from the top of her from the top of her forehead uh and she kind of looks around oh that feels much much nicer now if you could, don't mind uh i'd like to put my armor back on i feel a bit exposed here maybe just rest a little bit there's something I have to do in order to make this work. Uh, well, a little rest doesn't sound terrible. She kind of like sits back on the bed a little bit and just kind of leans back and relaxes. Oh, you can see she, as she's breathing, it's almost foreign to her because she is so used to the labored breath that she had before. So like breathing normally now, so like she's very in tune with uh, in with with her body at the moment and she kind of looks over at Caro and, and gives you like a quick wink. Oh. You see different eyes are they're all blue as well. What's that, Dequin? Oh, sorry. I was just saying that you can see his eyes are all just like an immense blue that sheds the same shade as all the... Um, Diggies around, and he's gonna stare straight to Kara. This is the way of my people to protect, protect one another for as long as you can uphold the respect of Ufgat and his ways. You shall receive his blessings and his protection. It's been passed down onto me for my family for generations. Firstly, while we travel as one, we are family. Femu protects one another at all costs. And secondly, we do not cut down living trees, no matter what. And must stop the act if we see them. <laughs> if you are to accept these terms, you shall receive the protection from myself and Ufgard. I, Dukwin Skusij, of the Ufgard clan, Black Raven tribe, hereby promises you, Karo, for as long as you travel with me, you are considered family. Denied to Queen Sidge. Protect my family. For every bit of strength I have. If you accept my gift. And you see one of the tattoos on his arms like rips off and floats. And then what operates beside him is a young village of a young elf. Tribal in nature. Very much similar to the attire that the Queen wears. For as long as you remain in the good graces of Ufgard and myself, we shall protect you. This young elf is called Ira. But back in our tribe, we often called her Pup. And she is willing to protect you. What say you, Caro? Do you accept the protection from Ufgard? And allow Ira to give you the mark of protection? I accept. As he approaches, he puts his hand onto Kara's head, and you see Ira vanish and wisp through his arm, and then flow through. I'm just Kara's imagining body. his hand is so big that it just covers her yeah. entire face. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, and you feel this cold sensation go through your body and on the back of your hand is a tribal tattoo that is now glowing blue and then as soon as that is done he'll peer over to Odaxi and start walking over Odaxi 
I, De Quincey of the Ufgar clan, Black Raven tribe, hereby promises you, Adaxi, for as long as you travel with me, you are considered family. And I, De Quincey, protect my family. For every bit of strength I have, I bestow upon you this gift. And you see two tattoos lift off his horns that wisp around and like twirl around him for a little bit of a sec. And then two little white elves appear beside me, twins in nature, one female, one male. For as long as you remain in good graces of Wolfgard and myself, we shall protect you. These twins are named Luna and Sol, and they have chosen to protect you, Warriors. What say you, Adaxi? Do you accept the protection from Ufgard and allow Luna and Sol to give you the mark of protection? I accept. He'll like grab both of his tusks, one left hand, right hand, and you'll see the two spirits flow through them and back into your tusk, and you see tribal tattoos light up on your tusk. And lift this head up and he'll go back down to where the drums are beating and he'll smile to the shaman when the mark shines bright you know that you are protected and that we are family one and strong and he'll just do a big clap and everything just disappears And with that, let's take like a quick five minute break to use the restroom and everything since we're like about halfway through the session. Uh, and we'll come right back. Grab a cool. drink, grab some grab some knucklehead trout, chowder, whatever you need. We'll be right back in like, you know, five minutes or so. Gubby. All right. Mics are good, so you guys can chit chat in the background without uh, it being broadcasted right now. Uh, yeah, that was really good. That was. Uh... <laughs> Wars. <laughs> it's, 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 it's... That's funny. All right, I'll be right back, guys.
Oh my, oh my. <laughs> Discord, nice. I can get rid of that. Well, after spending eight hours doing uh, OBS stuff yesterday, John, I, I've actually got a much better handle on how to do how to do things. Uh oh. What headphones do you have? We're just waiting for the Quinn. It was really hard for me to chime in during his thing and just make like little funny comments like Kara, I was like right when you're like, Do you accept? And I was like, She hesitated. Or he was like, uh, I put my like you put put your hands on your on your tusk Odaxi and I was gonna chime in but like and I break them off. <laughs> no, no, no. You're doing you're you're doing a, a good moment. I didn't wanna I had to mute myself, I didn't wanna ruin it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah, everyone gets to rage. <laughs> you be all. You all be unstoppable. Yeah, you would be destroying things. Uh, no, I think it. Uh, when you do rage at level three, right? It does things. Not to get reckless. All right, you guys ready to switch back over? Just don't Let's cut go. down the tree or I'll cut your arms off. <laughs> and with that, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't cut down a living tree or I'll cut your arms off. That's uh, exactly right. Yeah, so this... Um, this sort of ritual comes to an end and all of the, the figures that were sitting around... Uh, uh, at at with the the last beat of your drum, they all kind of just fade away. 
um, like they were never there. Melandra kind of looks you, looks you up and down to Quinn and kind of writes herself on the bed again and I was perhaps wrong about you. Most people are. Most people accuse me of breaking rooms, but I don't really do it. What a strange thing to say. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I can tell you guys one thing that I know with absolute certain. I need uh, a drink. Damn, I was close. Well, we're in the right place. Kara, I don't know if you've ever even... I don't even know if you've ever even seen Melandra drink, but you can tell she's in a much more chipper place and like she's a lot perkier and uh I am not used to seeing her like this. No, it's a little weird. It's a little weird, but um she kind of stands up, writes herself, fixes her hair and tucks in her shirt and makes sure she looks presentable and uh grabs grabs her plate mail and she just kind of like starts to uh, parade out of the room and uh into into the mead hall again. Kyle just like stands and stares for a moment. As she walks by and she's outside the door, she kind of looks back and goes, Come on, pup. Yes! <laughs> I, I, what? I, I would tell her, relax a little bit. Not everything is so black and white. talking to Caro. Yep. As you guys, uh... Sure. As you guys get back to the table where you're at, you can see there's, uh, five fresh, uh, meads on there. Melandra goes... just about to ask. That's good. Melandra goes up to Lyra and, uh, thanks her and, uh, Gives her, uh, you can see she kind of takes some some coin out of her purse and hands it over to her and uh, gives her a nod and heads back to um, sit at the table. She kind of winces a little when she sits down, but uh, she looks over at all and she goes, it's just sore is all. Just sore. God, it's nice to be able to breathe without feeling like I was pushing air against a wall. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure I could have taken those two uh, two thugs at the uh, entrance out there, but a little, a little blind with rage, perhaps. Well, they're dead now. And, I'm sorry? you called me hot-headed. We don't know that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you are hot-headed, dear. Now drink your, drink your mead. If anyone needs one, it's probably you. Yeah, she just, just kind of blinked, like, uh, I, she just sips it once. It's good. It's honey. It's a honey mead recipe, uh, again, that they brew only in this location. Um, Davos and DeQuinn, you've probably had it in other places, but this is the freshest you've probably ever had it. Uh, it's, it's pretty good stuff. You can see why. Uh, tin ta- it's shipped all over the Tin Towns. Melander goes, Well, we are here to make our way to Bryn Shander to report in and see what we can what we can ascertain about the nature of this, this whole calamity here in, in Icewind Dale. Um, Obviously, we got a little sidetrack there. That girl, is she okay? The the really weird one with the, the, the odd voice? Totally fine. She's in a better place. Oh, my. What happened? <laughs> That's not what he meant. That's not what he meant. Oh, she's alive? Yes. Yeah, she got herself a job at the inn? Question mark? Oh. Maybe not for long. Okay. Okay, well, she's better off than when we found her, I suppose. Exactly. Most definitely. What about you two? And she kind of gestures to Davos and to Quinn. What, what, uh, 
what are you at play here? What are you what are you doing in this area? I'm actually thinking about going fishing. Is that rude of me? Uh, uh I don't think so. I mean, uh, I'm not really one for houses and playing house and stuff like that. Oh, playing oh. house. I want to be the uh, big brother. Um we uh, we're just Looking for work. Okay. Moseying. Well, what about you, uh, Odaxi? Well, I seem to have a clue where my old companion is. North of here. Okay. Uh, from his relation, uh, Lyra. Okay. And you're just here visiting him, I suppose? Or... Or just making sure he's okay. Oh, well. Seems like uh, perhaps she may want you to, to complete that adventure. She seemed... She doesn't ang- seem to care, actually. Uh, and that is mildly concerning as well. I think you'd be surprised. Some people carry stress and grief in different ways. Yes, maybe. Well, I've been here for about, uh, I don't know, four or five hours, um, trying to find you lots, running around, but I've quickly find out that the person in charge here, the speaker or whatever they call them in this part of the world, uh, was recently killed, and your friend Lyra is missing several casks of, of, of their ale. Perhaps we should help or look into whatever is going on here um, I could use probably one more two more days rest before I travel to Bryn Shander <clears throat> uh, yeah I would go and ask Alira right mm-hmm. um, what, a, what a speaker is oh, you know the speakers are like the town mayors okay so and what uh, is the process of replacing the dead one? She kind of looks, uh, well, uh, there's usually a, a vote in each town. It's, it's really they just elect um, a, a, elect a, a new uh, speaker. I think, uh, I think it's only been a couple of days now since, since our last one died, whose name I can't quite remember off the top of my head. <laughs> Kendrick Reelsbarrow, uh is his name. Uh it's only been a couple of days since we found his body, um, and since then, um, there have been two people uh, that have kind of come forward to be to be to replace him. Uh, one is uh, uh, Olivessa. She's uh, she makes the cask actually for our meat here. She's a good hard worker. Uh, a lot of the town respect her. And there's another. Oh, what's his name? Shandor. I believe he's a dwarf. I'll have to double check. Uh, yeah, he's a dwarf. Um, some people have thrown support behind him as well, but uh, I, you know, I, ultimately, I think it's it's just uh, up to the town to decide. <clears throat> um, and what you guys said, you're like almost out of mead. We're definitely we took a hit. Uh, we lost three cask. Um, it just threw the threw it over its shoulder and stormed off. And the speaker chased went to chase after him. And well, he, he was quite handedly uh, dealt with, I, unfortunately. And he was a he's a strong fighter. These these Verbeek, they're they're not something to uh, to take lightly. Where where do you think they are? Uh, to the south, I would imagine. That's where the the speaker took off to. We sent a group of uh, a group of, of some of the town's militia to go and investigate as well to see if they could find any traces of him. That was this morning. So maybe perhaps they have more information to the south. <clears throat> I tell you what, uh, we'd, we would be very grateful if you could uh, return them for us. Uh, we don't have a lot of money, but, you know, we... Do have plenty of booze and food and a place to at least a place to stay for the night if you need it. 
I'm yeah, let me see what my friends think. Uh, so we're going to go get that booze, right? <clears throat> well, it appears we all should travel together. I say why not? Melandra looks over and goes, Well, I did hear that... She said, your friend went towards Bryn Shander, so perhaps there will be some answers there. We could all travel in that direction after we investigate or deal with whatever whatever thief is stealing the mead. Um, yeah, I think if, we, if you need days to rest, then we can maybe help these people out in the meantime do we need to find an inn <clears throat> um what time is it uh it is probably just getting close to 12 now okay i think we can yeah it's still it's still yeah out. i mean yeah. for mel Sandra to rest at <clears throat> that's fine i'm not, not not for us yeah. i'll um I'll just rest here, honestly. There's some some furs. I'll talk to I'll talk to Lyra to see if perhaps I can <clears throat> I can just kind of prop myself up in a corner and get some rest. Honestly, the the stables in the back had some comfortable looking hay. I, I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. I'll try not to run them out of mead. Ah, <clears throat> uh, you know, when you have things to celebrate, you should celebrate them. They're few and far between. I find sometimes. Well, cheers to I, that. <clears throat> I asked Lyra how, like, what are the uh, what are the prerequisites to to be the uh, speaker? I'll just don't be a shite head, I suppose. I mean, excellent, excellent. Ultimately, you would be uh, representing the town. You would have to travel and meet occasionally with the other speakers in Bryn Shander. Uh, but I mean, it's really just a someone the town can can support. Uh, you know, someone perhaps who returned the town's important product and maybe dealt with any threats that are stealing that product would be someone we could all throw some throw some support behind. You definitely have my vote. Excellent. Uh, let's go get the booze. <sighs> Team? Everyone is there but Dequ uh, Dequid. I know where to find him. I'll finish my mead and agree that we should go. Yeah, I'm trying to get some knucklehead trout, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I would go back down to the river <clears throat> and uh, I would talk to DeQuinn about going to helping these people find their mead. Oh, let me see here. Sorry, I'm trying to find the uh, the rules for fishing. Oh, it's going to be a mini game. It's it's it's. I mean, it's a whole thing. It's like you know. So uh, so, in the meantime, while this the ha this is all talking and going on, to Quinn, you go south out of the uh, out of the meat hall to the docks mm -hmm. uh, to do some fishing. Right? Do you have any bait? I have everything. You have everything, huh? All right, all right. Let me see here. We may just have to. We may just have to fake this one until I can find it. I, I would assume I would have, because we talked about it before. Right. Um, I assume we would have most things, and then bait keeps pretty well in the frozen environment, right? That's true. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about it expiring too quickly, at least as long as it's not frozen. You have to have it a little bit rotten, because fish love it when it's a bit stinky. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see here. I know it's here somewhere, and I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i find it later as soon as I'm not looking for it. Uh, so roll a... Uh, roll a d20. Mm -hmm. And you can add... Add five because you actually have a pole. Well, you have to have a pole. Add two because you have tackle. 
you have actual bait. Add two? Okay. Yeah. Thirteen? Yep. Okay. You're kind of sitting there, uh, thinking over the, thinking over the, the whole, uh, ritual that, you know, just went through and, and, and kind of sort of bonding with these, with these new people that you've come across, uh, and you feel there's a, just a little tiny tug, uh, at the bottom, at the, at the pole, not too, not too aggressive, uh, you would know since you since you've been fishing a few times that maybe it's just something you know getting a little curious, taking a little nibble. Yeah, you don't yank on that one. You gotta right, wait. Right, 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 right. A few more minutes go by. Make another uh, make another check. Plus two. All right, yeah. So your patience kind of pays off in a moment. And you're like, all right, that feels that feels like something's just kind of toying at the bait at the bottom, uh, and then you start to feel uh, you start to feel pressure, and you can, and where there was once just a nibble, the the rods bending uh, over and kind of curling over into the water there. <laughs> Make a yeah. strength check. Oh, that roller for the banjo, I don't know why. Uh, and three is just your modifier? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you as you as you tug and you're like your goal is to like set the hook into this, this fish's mouth so that it can't get away. You reel back and and as hard as you can and you can feel the uh, the the tension in the rod and, and it starts to come a little closer to you and as you kinda take some steps back and try to guide it towards like the shallower edge of the of the docks. It starts to like pull away from you again, but it's it's kind of close. You can almost just fling it onto the ground. Um, make one more strength check. Uh, so as you go and you 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 set your hips and you begin to turn to to fling the the fish up, a sudden like just jolt kind of takes you off balance and you take a couple steps back and you begin to fall like back towards the edge of the dock, back towards the deeper part of 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 the water make one more strength check to see if you can kind of pull this thing in all right now you're angry because you're not going to be bested by uh a small fish in the water that you you know and you're the mighty de quinn so you kind of set your feet and your, your hooves into the uh the dock and pry them into the wood and then just with your hips and your back and your shoulders just kind of flex and fling and you trying to rip it towards you instead of ripping it to the land uh, and out of the water shoots this this red uh, ugly fish it's got like a its head is kind of bulbous but hard and you you know you would know I've having fish for them for a long time that that's why they call them knuckleheads they got this like skull like uh, plate uh, on their head uh, and it just kind of flops and lands on on the uh, on the dock there that's what we wanted i'm gonna chop its gill to bleed the blood out and oh get... <laughs> so you just yeah. immediately come down with the axe yeah you gotta bleed it okay okay uh roll a d20 just a random just a regular d20 yeah sure uh so it's it's, it's average size uh you, you know you've caught a few in your time this one uh this one just, you know, it's not the biggest, but it's not the smallest either. It's got some good meat to it, and, and you know that the the bones are highly sought after. There's a few people at the dock start to actually applaud, um, and you can see, like, lots of people are now casting lines in the area where you where you threw yours to try and also, like, maybe cash in on some luck at the time. Oh, I'm ready for a fight. I'm ready for a fight. This is red water we're at, right? It's red water, yeah. Uh, they're friendly-ish. They, <laughs> you know, they... Uh, they're not trying to knock you out of the way as much as just kind of take like get into the same spot where you where you clearly had some success. Lovely. And I'm gonna de gut it and check its guts. Uh okay, yeah, so uh make just make a survival check. Man, fishing is hard. 
<laughs> so this is just to try and clean some of the meat off the bones and and get get the guts out. And you you're you've done this a few times, so uh, so you're not you're, you're not unfamiliar with the whole process. Um, I was gonna leave the fish as a whole. I just want to check his guts. Oh okay. Oh okay. Yeah. So um, it it looks like guts. It's pretty pretty average stuff there. Nothing nothing too crazy going on. Nothing shiny. No, nothing shiny. That's disappointing. Okay. I'll use some of its guts as bait and throw it out for another one until something until Davis comes grab me or until light starts to go away. Yeah, as you kind of uh some of the other some of the other fishermen there, they come up and they they ask if they can use some of the bits, bits and pieces, and whatever you, whatever you just don't want. You're gonna keep the actual fish. Yeah. 100%. Okay. So make sure you add like I don't know, gutted, got a knucklehead, <laughs> gutted knucklehead trout. Um, you can put like average if you want in terms of like so we remember the size of it. Uh, add that to your your inventory. What are you storing this thing in? Just on my hip. Okay, so you're just gonna. Okay. The best freezer out here is on my hip, I guess. Sure. I guess. Yeah, I wouldn't really. I guess I have a bag. I guess I'll put it in the bag, which is stored. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as you're starting to like, kind of put it in the bag and wrap it up, you Davos comes behind you, and he f fills you in on the, uh, on everything that's been going on. Or at least what they oh. talked about inside the inside the place, inside the meat hall. <laughs> I knew that woman was weak. She came here ill prepared. She needs another couple of days after healing up. Uh, so, are we to go south? You said. That's what uh, that's what they said. Yeah, south. Uh, is the direction the that the the Verbeek last took off in? Will we leave first thing in the morning, or are we leaving now? <clears throat> I think there's time to leave now. It's it's kind of important that we get there first. Hmm. Oh, Davos, check what I caught! Not showing the big knuckle or the average knucklehead. Uh it's great, impressive. <laughs> you, yeah, and pretty hard to do you know most of the time you have to actually have a rowboat to get out to where the knucklehead is deep enough to get him uh he you know just got seemed to get kind of lucky and catch one uh perusing for food near the shoreline so we're gonna eat well tonight um we go way back i guess Okay, uh, the four of you are now still inside the tavern. Do you want it to take off and in, in pursue in the direction of uh, where they last saw this this Verbeeg, uh character? I do. Okay, um, so you head south a ways. Let's do and, it. And through, uh, so you're going to go around. Uh, uh, let me pull up my map here. Make sure I don't lie to you guys. Um, yeah, as you start to as you start to head south, uh, there's the clearing uh, clearing past uh, past around the docks and kind of following sort of maybe the outskirts of of this edge of the lake. Uh, actually, I don't know if you can go around the edge of the lake. We'll say that for the sake of all this, it's not going to be south because that's going to put you on top of the lake, and logistically, that doesn't seem right. So, uh, you head in the direction. We'll say it's it's actually you know south, um, south uh, northwest, uh, past past the trees where a lot of the the foraging for the bees are. Uh, a figure in like cold weather clothing kind of lurches out from the woods, uh, running as fast as he can towards you, and on his back is this pair of animal traps, and one contains a a small panicked fox. And he's sprinting towards you guys, and as he sees you, he kind of waves you down and stops just to catch his breath. I, uh, I don't think I recommend going that direction anymore. 
Why? Uh, well, there's uh, about five bodies, and all <laughs> of their uh, their uh, and he seems to be kind of stumbling for words. He's like pointing to his chest. He's like they're they're it's, they're crushed. They're crushed in the um in their chest. Uh, I mean, is that a normal thing here? <laughs> Uh, no, it's not fucking normal. There's no, we don't just have bodies <laughs> laying around with the chest cavities cracked in. That's what I suspected. Well, you know, are you a are you a registered voter of Goodmead? What? I'm thief. Are you are you a registered voter of Goodmead? What do you mean registered? Listen, we man. <laughs> we don't we don't reg you... yeah. register to vote. That seems ridiculous. Uh, no, I'm with you. I hate the government knowing my business. Uh, well, yeah, we're gonna go help you out with this. Oh, uh, okay. Well, it's that direction, and he kind of points. Um, and as he like turns, you guys can see like the there's like the fox in the cage is kind of like, you know, just kind of laying laying down. He points back and goes, "Hi, you couple. I don't know, hundred yards to the to the west over there, and there you'll you'll see the bodies." Uh, yeah. Let's go that way. Steep. What's that? So he's very good at being a detective. <laughs> yeah, nothing like hard-hitting questions like, are you a registered voter to really determine the nature of the grizzly sitting <laughs> around? <laughs> <laughs> hey, just vote for me, yeah? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so deep in the woods, you go past these like these these pines that are covered in snow, and you discover like they're on the ground. There are these five militia dressed men. Uh, they look like they were clubbed to death, and some snow has started to settle on their corpse a little bit already, and kind of begin to, as you can tell, like the Icewind Dale quickly covers up anything that you know any any crime or any sort of uh, altercation that happens out in the snow. So before you, there's just a body of five, five people, five militia. Can we determine how they died? Uh, roll a wisdom check. Here's the uh, survival. Do survival. <laughs> sorry. if you did it oh yeah uh you can tell uh they were all i've seen the imprints on the chest and how these are all like blunt force trauma wounds you can ascertain that this is a they were clubbed by some sort of massive club um and then behind you see these these tracks and having studied some of the different uh floral and fauna and 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 uh predators of the area before coming here Daxi, you can recognize that these look like they belong to a large giant. Giants. Yeah. Uh, and you you would know that based on the description you've heard from this this of this Verbeek, this is these are two different creatures. Well, it seems we have giants. <laughs> Uh, can I tell which way the giant's prints are leading away? Yeah, the the path is kind of becoming covered relatively quickly, but uh, you can you can definitely make out the direction of the tracks and continue to follow them. Uh, everyone, follow, let's follow these tracks. Yep. As you start to 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 follow the trail, this kind of somewhat disappearing trail of uh of tracks you guys get about two or three hours in and you realize you know that this has been a bit of a trek to get out to this to this portion of uh in this direction uh so just letting you guys know that this is you're you are now at least two or three hours away from town uh and continuing to follow will likely just put you in a scenario where you're gonna have to be out you know past dark the sun's already starting to go down it's starting to get to get colder quickly <clears throat> if 
if we're dealing with, with giants too, then the people of good need need deserve our protection. It, it seems unlikely that giants would just come out on their own. I think we should investigate this giant thing. I agree. I mean, usually when people or things get hungry, they go searching for things. I don't think they ate anyone, though. They just kind of whacked them to death. I was always told I don't know what... humans. None of them looked eaten to me. Well, how'd you know? There was... Maybe there was more than five. Maybe <laughs> they just went greedy. If there's sentient life out here, there, there's some kind of shelter we can take for the night if we need to. I think we, we use the rest of our daylight to follow the tracks. Well, yeah, I think we should. Let's move on then, quickly. Okay. <clears throat> as you guys Step press pace. as you guys press forward and quickly, you know, try to to figure out where this trail's leading before you get stuck in the wilderness, uh for too long it's another it is another like two three hours and but you do start to see this 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 large uh okay, well, actually let me pull it up so that i describe it the correct way um the trail comes to this rocky hillside and there's these these large pines growing from the base around uh, around around it at end of the hill you can see that there are three caves and also a frozen creek uh which is coming from the the westernmost cave uh, it has a low hanging mouth, uh, but you can see that the the bed has essentially frozen uh, pretty completely, and that's going into the the cave to the left. Directly in front of you, there's this eight foot high passage uh, hewn from the rock. It's blocked by like uh, two massive fallen logs, uh, kind of covering the entrance. Some you can maneuver around them, uh, but uh, that's directly in front of you. And then to the right, there's this big. Uh, big yawning mouth and flickers of light emanate from within it and the tracks you've been following they seem to they seem to head in that direction to the right then to the right to the right to the right <laughs> all right Is that is that the direction you guys want to go? I'm just I'm just kind of moving us over and getting ready. Uh, you don't, you know, I just want to make sure that that's what everyone wants to do. I think so. I think so. <clears throat> okay. I will. Um... Oh, we can drop all your characters here. I'll drop them real quick. So let me. Caro. And Davos and Otaxi, and I will use the reveal function to show you what you guys see here. Can you guys? Did I move you guys to the right map? I just guys, see you black. Should, you should, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, black. that's that's fine. It's very right. dark. It's very dark. Uh, I wasn't lying to you when I told you it gets dark in the, <laughs> the ice window. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. All right. I don't have dark vision. So here is the area you guys are at oh. can you guys see it actually here so the cart got, does. I clicked it so it should push everyone to there <laughs> so these squares because we're using uh, kind of like a pulled back map these squares are probably more like 10 feet rather than 5 um, just so uh, no they're about 5 no I, I'm sorry I'm wrong they're about 5 so uh, so these are the 3 and actually this is like another cave right here I can Oh, I have to do it with my other one here. See, so just so you can see the entrance there. Um, so, if you guys want to pursue the right cave, uh, that's <clears> fine. <throat> I'll just kind of let you guide uh, guide going forward here, and who's going to be in what order. And it's bright in there, right? It's got there's light. a there's a flickering light. It's still pretty dark, um, but you can see some light coming from inside the the, the right entrance. 
I have enhanced dark vision, so I'll go first. Okay, you'll see. I'll just do my everyone's favorite polygon reveal from roll 20. So you can see the entrance of the cave a little further. Okay, well. Actually, I think just for the sake of this not driving me nuts, you guys can see like the rest of this down here. And this whole area here. Uh, okay, so as you push a little further, so you're kind of glancing around the corner, this corner over here. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give you... Here, I'll let you just, just take this whole room so I don't have to keep doing this damn polygon reveal thing. There we go. So you see a bonfire in the middle of the cave keeps it lit and pretty warm. There's a, the, now it smells, you get closer, the smell of roasted <clears> meat. Uh, and there's a hunk of meat on the spit and it's dripping juice. And every time it, every time it drips, you can see the fire kind of sizzle to catch it. Uh, to the right, uh, there are goats and sheep held in a, in a spacious pen and enclosed by a crude fence. And uh, there is also a horse, one horse uh, in there as well. Other features of the cave include a wooden cart that has a broken wheel. There's two crates and two barrels. Um, I want to go up to this and just kind of listen for a while. Do okay. I hear anything exceptional? Any signs of life? I mean, obviously there's something besides the fire. Right. Make a, make a perception check. Sorry if you guys hear my massive clicking as I try to make some sort of organic sort of reveal here on the polygon map. What you got? Three. Uh, <laughs> the only thing you hear is DeQuinn behind you licking his lips over and over and over. <laughs> okay. And the crackling of the fire and... Uh, <clears throat> and that's it. <clears throat> Tin shining. Hello. What's that? Is the lantern shining at all? Like the. Oh, you the could lantern. take the lantern out and look at it. Mhm. Mm uh, no, it seems to flicker normally. No response. Uh, would you like me to go ahead? Uh, um, yeah. Well, shall we? <laughs> yeah, I would. Around. Yeah, we should. Uh, I want to go in. So if you want to go first, um, see what's in here. No. Peer out and see if I can see anything. As you step uh, in, Tara would have her heal and um, hammer out by now. Okay. As you guys uh, step in, uh, nothing new really reveals itself. You can see there's a there's a an exit to the the northwest, uh, the, one directly north, and then another one to the north uh, east ish of sorts. Kara, as you get closer and come around the corner, the horse in the pen looks very familiar. It's a horse. There's a horse, and you guys can't see it because I don't have... I mean, I guess I could... I didn't put horse and things and characters on uh, on this map particularly because it's just kind of like an overview map. But yeah, over in this pen, there are goats. What did I say? There are goats, sheep, and a horse. And Carol, you can tell, you know, as you turn the corner, it's definitely your horse. Do not draw, uh, do not draw an alligator. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Inside, just like yeah, it's so Terry. Inside, you see Perry and all of the animals. There's a there's a lot of hay. Um, there's some in the back of the cart as well. Um, so some, you know, they're fed. 
there's only like footsteps around the fire, like leading away. That that looks like a scuffle. Or <clears> yeah, are we? Are we still following the giant's footsteps too? Uh, the footsteps have probably sort of they become harder to see against the cave floor than they were in the snow. Uh, if you want to make a survival check, uh, whoever to see if you can discern like where it's, if it's where it's gone inside this cave, you can. Um, it's just gonna be a little harder because the the ground is different here. I I can do. I I'll see. I'll help with Daxi. Okay. Okay. Um. So to help, uh, first to Quinn, you roll a roll a, a survival check. And what's your what's your passive survival um daxi let me pull it up real quick passive survival yeah i have plus five bonus but i don't know what i'll look real quick my campaign so 21 it doesn't matter so so roll a survival check with advantage so it's a it's a different sort of technique i've seen another gm use where if someone wants to help with something if they can roll better than than that person's passive then they can actually help Otherwise, people just try to get advantage all the time on it, and so it, okay. this is kind of a better rule to like see if it's even possible to help someone, ha you know, with a, like a survival check. Okay, yeah, so with where you can like give help with someone if you're proficient in it. Yeah, I would say, well, if you're proficient, in it, you're going to get a better bonus modifier when you roll, so your chances of being able to beat their passive is higher. Yeah, I'm already proficient in for survival, anyways. Um. So I mean, there's definitely we can and we can something we can talk offline too is try to figure out better ways. I just I just don't want like what you see all the time in these is like everyone's like, hi, I'd like to help. You know, I'll just help him do whatever. And it's like, okay, well, there should needs to be a better way than you just always giving advantage to checks. Like you know? guidance, that's different than guidance, right? Yeah, guidance, guidance is, a spell. is an actual spell. Yeah. Yeah. Can't trip. Uh, so Kara runs over to Perry. Is that his name? Oh, Terry just runs right in the room. Uh, Terry, short for Tarragon. <laughs> Okay. Uh, the 21, uh, it, you guys can, as you guys get together and huddle around and you kind of look around the fire, you can see that the tracks, there's several tracks, as you can tell, it lives in this area. The most recent ones, um, let me make sure I do this right, uh, they, they go this direction to the north. What's in these casks up here? I want to uh, quietly go over there and check those out. Okay. Um, that's where the steps <clears throat> lead, so I have a look down there. Let's see. Uh, uh, so as you go over and look at the crates, one has some straw in there that checks out because that's what they're feeding the... Uh, feeding the animals with the other contains uh 10 large torches uh homemade looking made out of wood and 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 hay and the one barrel is filled with like i don't know it looks like some sort of spice like some salt and pepper um which you can hear sizzling behind you all right <clears throat> is the meat like is it cooked right now, or is it just like it's just been put on? Uh, it is. It's getting. It's looking pretty. Looking pretty charred. It looks like it's been on for a while. Oh, can I use my hover to take it off? Sure, you could do that. Hmm. I'm not gonna say no to a free meal. As you, uh, as you're like, are you going to start eating? Not straight away. I'll let it cool down, so it'll probably take 10 seconds and then start eating. Oh, I'll inspect it first before I start eating. Okay. If I seem to know what the animal is. Sure, roll another roll a survival check yourself. I think that's right, yeah, yeah survival. I know for sure that giants eat humans. Serve mankind. Uh, it's a tougher meat. It's muscular. Um, but it's hard to determine what kind it is. Not a lot of fat on it. Of course. Uh oh. But not, not, not our horse. Meat's meat. 
Um, My jaw went tight when you said it's horse. <laughs> as you as you're looking by the campfire, you see that to the to the nearby there's like a small bundle of of it looks like I don't know, um, clothing, uh, some boots. Okay, then I won't eat it because now I'm <clears throat> That's sad. Uh, is it like human sized boots and clothing? Uh, it is a smaller, yes, uh, humanoid sized boot. Uh, and there's actually okay. a, a battle axe sticking under the under the robe if you if you push it to the side. Uh, I take all the clothes and the boots. Okay, you have um, a battle axe. You doing the battle axe here or no? I'll take that. It's, you have battle axe and thick boots um, and then just regular clothes. Yes. Is there anything in this cart? Hey, bro. It's pretty much it. Oh, it's just hey. Hey, hey. So I'll say since you guys are kind of meandering around in here and running up the horses and animals, um, everyone make a stealth check to determine oh how loud this operation has been. Oh god, mine's gonna have to be a disadvantage because of my chain mail. <laughs> Dude, all of our roles are so bad, yeah. so it's totally irrelevant. Yeah, it is completely <laughs> irrelevant. <laughs> How did I get the best roll? <laughs> you did advantage, not disadvantage. Oh no, never mind. Never mind. As uh, as you guys are looking over the meat, and DeQuinn's about to take a a big spicy chunk out of it, uh, Davos looks over and points to like the the battle axe and the and the and the boots on the floor. Um, and it's about that time you guys realize DeQuinn kind of kind of like flinches a little bit and. I don't know. Do you keep the meat, or would you throw it back if you found out if you had a suspicion it was human? I throw it back in the fire. So he tosses it back on the fire, but when he does, it kicks up and like a one of the logs kind of rolls out of the out of the all from under the fire, and you hear a grunting uh, to the north, uh, and some footsteps kind of start to quake through. And I will move us to prepare yourself. I think it's I think it's this one. <clears throat> Is this right? Oh, Looks yeah. right. Can you guys see the entire Looks thing here? Yeah. Yeah, so this is me <laughs> recreating that map in a different map. Oh yeah, let me drag you guys all in. Oh you guys I got did it. Myself. Yeah, feel free to Not as good of a horse, but oh, I get the idea. <laughs> 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 why can't I drag you? Oh, that's why, because I'm not I'm doing it with the wrong person. Caro, DeQuinn. Oh, two DeQuins. Well, it's just how the dice fell. Prefers duo Quinn. Why can't I? Oh, that's why I put him on the wrong layer. Oh, you got him. Uh, okay. Uh, and yeah, from the from the north, you kind of hear a stammering. As a large figure with a with a with a club comes c rolling around the corner. Do I know what kind? Like, can I before it tries to smash us? Do I know what kind of giant that is? Um. Do you have experience with giants? I have experience I might in the know. north. Um. Roll. I guess it had a lot of survival checks in this. This, yeah, roll a survival check. I mean, I think that's what it comes down to. I will survive. Hey, hey. <laughs> uh, to be fair, uh, and I guess I should I should leave with this, and unless I've been telling you guys wrong the entire time. Um, it's a it's a it's an ogre coming around the corner here. Okay. Oh, well, that mm. makes okay. Um, um a giant ogre. Uh, he's 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 big. Uh, as he comes around the corner, uh, he would we? Sorry. You know, he sees you all and and he wheels out his club and he goes, friend, friend, and starts yelling. And to the left, you hear another set uh, set of staggering footsteps come meandering through. Um, let me also. I want to do something before the other guy comes in. Okay, go ahead. Um, I want to really closely look i guess uh, a dax would be closest and i would just say trust me and i want to shape shift into the splitting image of this other ogre of the ogre you see right now yeah 
Uh, okay. So, but you're gonna be sh you're gonna be shorter, right? Okay, how far? How much can you change your shot? Your size? It says as long as I stay with the same basic limb ar arrangement, I can do my thing. I can change height, weight, size, except my stats don't change. There's gotta be some limit to size, no? He's saying as long as the, as long as it's humanoid. I know, right, but like. Same. It, it, like can't, it can't, can't shapeshift into a dragon. Right, right. Well, it, it doesn't shape. have wings. It says, you can determine the specifics of the changes, including your coloration, hair, length, sex, weight, and height. You can make yourself appear as members of other races, though none of your game statistics change. Okay, so you're going to take the shape of the ogre that you see in front of you? Yes. All right. Uh -huh. So, uh, I'm not going to change your token, but That's fine. You, you guys see before you... Uh, Two ogres that look identical, and the one that was yelling "friend" goes stops and goes looks. Uh. Uh. And he seems very confused uh, by what's going on. To your left, coming around the corner is another another large figure. Uh, here. If I can actually click him, there we go. Uh, comes around the corner. Uh, this again. This. This looking more like a giant than the ogre, uh, 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 with large, long, elongated features, covered in like his own makeshift uh, clothing and hide armor. He's wielding a big spear, uh, and he sees you all and and starts to intruders and branches his spear towards you. I would. I'm gonna come out and and say, uh, no, 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 no. These are slaves. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Friend, where did these come from? And then right as soon as you say that, the other ogre comes around the corner here. Oh, am I on the right layer? He goes, he no friend, I friend. And I'll say, um, he, he imposter, I'm friend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, roll a deception <laughs> check. Uh, Do I get uh, I'll say do you get advantage for being I'm the splitting image. You're the splitting image of him. <laughs> yeah, 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 go ahead. I I accept your argument. What's my what's my marauder's intelligence here? Oh, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. Okay. Uh he looks at both of you, and <laughs> I guess I guess you should give my ogre friend a chance to make a stab. Can I use a, sp a spell at this point, or? Um, you can uh, you can begin to prepare a spell. So I'll, I'll put you in queue for an action if you want, like for the next. So let me let me resolve this sort of confusion here. Okay. He goes, no, I friend, I friend, and he kind of looks at you, and he's like, he lies. Uh, God, what am I, what am I doing? Why am I rolling a charisma check for an ogre right now? Um... Get out of my swamp! <laughs> uh, did that, did that actually roll? Oh, I don't know where these are going. Here, I'll just roll normal. Oh, no. Uh, so he looks at, not Davos, the, the, his other ogre friend here, and he goes... You you lie you you lie, and the ogre looks at you angrily, Davos, and uh, and he's going to look to swing at you. So here's what we'll do: we'll roll initiative. Uh, of Daxi, you get one spell you can use first, and then we will we will enter combat round. I think. <clears throat> I think this whole battle got away from me very quickly with the two ogres thing, so I have no clue now what's going on. In, in all fairness, I don't think you shape changer can change your size. No, it says that. It says you also adjust your weight and height, but not so much that your size changes. So you can't. Point. Um, that's what I thought too. Like you can't go from medium to large, but let me see if you can get really close. It is large, so you would be a medium version of the ogre. Yeah, that's fine. 
They're dumb enough, maybe. The intelligence, his, his intelligence roll was so low. Um, <laughs> yeah, for the uh, sake of just pressing forward and letting fun things happen, we'll go with it. But so you are, so you're medium sized because he does, he is, he does take up like the the two by two square space. Um, okay. I mean, you had a good, you had a pretty good deception roll. Maybe you should have had disadvantage. I, it's even your disadvantage was better than his intelligence roll. Uh, yeah, so it's 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 all fine. It's all good. Uh, okay, let's do. Uh, so let me get some better music here. <clears throat> um, what's our fighting music, guys? Do you remember? <clears throat> got, are we got... at at this point for the sake of the combat that's about to happen? Are we that level three? Are we retconning back to? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you were level three. Yeah, you were level three. Okay, as good. soon as you, I, I don't know how to go back. Oh man, I'm sorry. I missed it. Uh, the ritual was uh, was was the, the actually oh. the healing of Melandra. I completely glossed over it. Uh, no worries. Accomplishing that quest. That's that's when uh, the sort of the energy of the ritual overtakes you all, and you all become a little stronger, and so you all hit level three. Right. Turn the music down just a little bit, and it's not even my—it's not even my good combat music, guys. This is the one I want. Yeah, it sounded like Christmas almost. Yeah, that was. There we go. Can I uh, not see anyone else's health bar, or do they just not have them? Uh, most people can only see their own health bar. Oh. Okay. Uh, and I do that just because I think it helps with the RP stuff a little more, right? Like, since mm -hmm. you don't know exactly how much health everyone has. Zero. <laughs> wow! I've been waiting for one of those. Well, you're, you're lucky. Lot, you're lucky you got. Uh... Ooh, look, another zero. No, I gotta roll for them. You stinker. Oh. You old. You old. Old so and so. So and so. You know what I'm trying to say. Um. Oh boy, that's fine. Uh, let's see. They've already done their hit points. Where's their initiative? Oh, here it is. Normal. Oh, is this the other ogre? That's the Verbeek. Oh, okay. Davos is an ogre. This is an ogre here. And then, uh, that's the... Okay, so Davos is a slightly smaller version of this one. Correct. Correct. And then this is a Verbeek. That's a Verbeek, yeah. So you Got can it. tell he matches the description like carrying the spear and the homemade hide that uh, <clears throat> that Leo okay. was kind of explaining to you all. Um, what I roll for him? Uh, Ten for the Marauder. Oh. Uh, and friend has a ten. Okay. Wait. Oh no, I rolled a zero for him. I don't know. It's a ten now. Um Caro, Odaxi, DeQuinn. Okay, I think we're good, so now I need to sort ascending. So you had a spell you were preparing, John. Do you still want to cast it or do you want to cancel it? Yeah, it was command. Okay. I, would, I do want to um, cast it. Well, I probably should have asked you what spell you were preparing before we initiate combat, but I don't think it. I don't think it would probably wouldn't matter too much at this point. But go ahead. Uh, but it might not go well now. Anyways, I wanted to command the Verbeek to attack, and 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 attack the fake ogre, the the real ogre, the, the real one <laughs> that I'm want to convince him it's shake. It, it's it's okay. So yeah. what uh, what spell? Uh, what's a level one spell? I actually. I'm reading it now. I don't think I can tell it to attack. You can only say one word. I know that. Yeah, an attack is not one of them. Uh, it can be. It's just kind of unclear. Like, it's tough to, like... I'm hoping with the advantage of there being already confusion that I can get him to attack. Is that okay? Is that acceptable? Yeah, that's think? fine. That's fine with me. All right. So you're just, the word you're going to say is attack. Um, the word I'm going to say is attack. Yeah. Okay. Did you? Uh, I, I think you have to roll. Is a spell save? I do. Oh, it's that's nothing. Good. That's a that's a good drop. And it's a lot of text. That's a good text drop here. It would yeah, be a save. save. I've got command in. Oh, it's a yeah, wisdom save. Yeah, sorry. It's okay. a wisdom save. Yeah, thirteen. Um. Uh, 
Uh, he does save. Does he actually okay. know if you fail? Um, uh, the man's like, uh, not directly harmful. Da, 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 da. Behaves, approach, drop. So I'm just seeing if he knows a spell is cast against him. Mm. Um, spell has no effect if. Oh, it doesn't understand. Wait, does he speak common? <laughs> yeah, he does. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so he kind of like he kind of like he hears you say attack, and he looks at you, and looks. I tell you what, just to be fair, I'm gonna give him another another roll. It just here. says if the target can't follow your command, the spell ends. Natural one. So he has no clue what's going on. He's still very confused by the whole. Over and I situation. even yelled attack at him. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, sounds good. Davos, or no, I'm sorry, Caro, you're up first. Okay, uh, Chayo. I would like to hop on, yeah, you heard it that side. I'd like to hop on my horse. <laughs> okay. You can use alt to try it. I'll give you control of the horse, too, real quick. Yeah, that would probably be helpful. I would like to, is it possible for me and my lovely, lovely, mighty steed, Terry, to jump the fence? Or is it too high? Uh, it's definitely not too high. Um, God, do you even know if mounting a horse is an action or not? Like, do I need that something I have to look up today? Does anyone know? Oh shoot! I'm gonna say, for the sake of just keeping things moving, it's a bonus action to mount the horse. Um, you want to command it forward. Uh, make an animal handling check. Oh dear. And we'll see how that goes. Once during, oh, you can mount a creature that's within five feet or dismount, cost the amount of movement equal to half your speed. Oh, okay, that's good to know. So he's not, uh, thank you for the quick look up, Davos. No problem. Um, equal to half your speed. So half your movement gone. Uh, you try to corral uh, Terry to to jump the to jump the fence, but it's dark. Uh, not dark, but like the the cave is kind of enclosing on him and you, and there's not really any run up, and he doesn't feel uh, he doesn't feel like uh, he he's gonna jump. Like he doesn't think he's gonna make it, so he kind of goes up to do it, and then kind of backs away and kind of like knocks a little and shakes its head some to you. Dang, uh, I guess I'm gonna have to run out the gate. Yeah, Get this out gate's the gate with him, I guess. Open-ish. It'd definitely be open, probably, since you kind of ran in there. Um, yeah. To to get to him, so you can do. Uh, you can do. Let's see. Can I not? Oh, I can't do it this way. I'll put you on him. Oh my god! I keep pressing the wrong alt. There we go. Um, and so you want to move towards the gate some? Yeah. See if I can, without, oh my god, I got the fence. <laughs> <laughs> it's a powerful steed. It's just a, sometimes these things are a nightmare. <laughs> like, you, and you also, it's, it's really, it's really my fault because it should be on the map layer probably anyway, but you know, here we are guys. We're doing it live. I'm gonna get the hay now for sure. Yep. God dang it. Here. 5, 10, 15. Take your damn horse with you. Um, that's about as far as you can get. I don't. What's the move speed for a mounted combatant? I mean, we don't need. We have, I have to look all this stuff up. I didn't plan on you jumping on the horse today. Um, <laughs> so I'm just gonna give you. You just gonna use your move speed for now, which is 30. And so that's all you've got because you spent 15 to get on the actual horse. Okay. So that's your movement. movement. You have your action and a bonus action. Um. Action dash. Yeah, I'll probably just dash. Okay. Then. Uh. Oh, uh. Oh, there we go. That's My fine. horse is getting ahead of me. That's fine. We'll, we'll sort it all out. I'll have to maybe make a token with you on your horse, so it's just one thing. 
Ya, eh uh, Hedge. Uh, up to the ogre. Okay. Um, and I'm <laughs> going to use my bonus action uh, to um, put my uh, vow of enmity on the ogre. Okay. You gain advantage on attack rolls against a creature for one minute until it tops to zero hit points. Okay, I will mark him somehow. Um, what's your favorite color? Purple. All right, he's got a purple mark to show that you have your vow of enmity on him. Uh, okay, anything else this round? I think that's about everything, right? Yeah, that's it. That was uh, move action and bonus action, yeah. Okay. Davos, you're up. You look ca- like an ogre. Yes, I cast Suggestion on the real ogre. Okay. Uh, and I suggest to him that he tell friend that he imposter. You guys <laughs> and your... That, I wanted to cast Suggestion too, but I realized <laughs> I didn't have a... I didn't have the material required or something uh what's it require a snake's a sp- tongue or a bit of honey s- or sweet oil if you have the spell casting focus you should yeah, need to worry about the typically that bonus. yeah you, it comes with that stuff like when you have a I focus i don't know what that is i don't know what the spell casting focus is you're uh, right, go, go go move move on i okay <laughs> it'd be um, a holy symbol for a cleric right yeah, I think so. most of the time it's, the materials aren't too terribly important unless okay. uh, monetary value. unless you have a monetary value, like a hundred gold diamond or something like that for well, a vivify or all something. All right, well that totally messed our. I outthought right. myself on my first spell. Then <laughs> that's all right. The more you know, you can always ask, and then I won't know the answer, and someone will, and we'll figure it out. Uh, okay, so you suggest a course of activity. Uh, creature. Wisdom save. Uh, okay, I can do that. Sorry, if that's what you're looking for. No, nope, you're fine. Yeah, it's, uh, does yeah. a zero beat your spell DC? <laughs> it does not. <laughs> <laughs> so you have suggested to him. Uh, he confessed to friend that he is the imposter. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Anything else you want to do? I will tell uh, as a, like a free action. I'll tell. I'll say slaves. Kill the imposter. <laughs> yeah. Small ogre is real sus right now. Uh, the small ogre is playing. <laughs> actually, the big one. ogre is sus. The small ogre <laughs> is completely not sus. Um, okay. I, uh, anything else you want to do? Nope. That's good. Well, That's great. look at that. Look whose turn it is. Friend is actually the ogre's name. It's, uh, but he, <laughs> he's not the brightest ogre, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, he is, uh, kind of, uh, friend. Friend is friend. Then I not friend. There can't be no two friends. And he kind of looks at, uh, the verb and goes, I know friend. And kind of, <laughs> kind of confused. Um, that's his action though, isn't it? To do that. What is your I suggestion? Believe, I, I think th- it says he has to use his action to do what I say. Uh, so he's going to walk forward, uh, you know, arguably breaking, um, <laughs> breaking, uh, uh, yeah, maybe he won't walk. Maybe he'll just kind of stand there because I don't, I don't think he's willing to know. He's going to look and look at the very beginning. I know friend. I know friend. He friend. Um, and then he's just not going to do anything? Jesus, I don't know. Specify conditions for his activity. For example, he was just letting I get warned of there. Uh, and before your companions damage the target, the spell ends. Yeah, I mean, that's it. I guess he's just kind of trying to convince the Verbig that he's not his friend, kind of pleading towards him that he's not the person that he knows. And so I guess he's just not going to take an action. So existential? Ah, it's so, yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm like role-playing something that's not, that not, doesn't think it's itself. 
You know, like, I know you know how to do that. Uh, who's next? Um, this Verbi kind of is completely confused now, but has been confessed to that this is the fake one. The real one is the fake one. So, and he's <laughs> rolled shit intelligence the entire time. And still, still no clue. So he's going to move forward and make two attacks against uh, <laughs> against yes. this, this ogre here. Oh, wow. Um, makes two melee attacks. Uh, which is a... I'm literally fighting myself. A 7 and a 22. The 7 does not hit, but the 22 does. The 22 does... Wait, what is that roll? Uh, it's 14. 3d8. 3d6 piercing. Um. Okay. I will mark that off, and so you can see he goes like he kind of runs up and spits it. He goes, "Fake friend," and he stabs him. He goes to stab him twice with the uh, with the spear. The first one, the ogre kind of dodges out of the side, and it glances off instinctively. Uh, the second one lands, uh, piercing the ogre kind of deep in its big its big belly. Uh. Let's see. Uh, and that is it. Uh, DeQuinn, you're up. DeQuinn, are you there? Yeah. Sorry. I would like to enter a rage. Okay. And uh, recklessly attack the imposter, as Davos has said, because I'm a slave. <laughs> All right, you got to move up. I think like one square. It looks like to get like right up behind him. Uh, ten feet. Oh, okay. I forget that. The of course, sure. You have a halberd, right? Oh, we should totally so we should totally play Among Us actually. Anyway, we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that off screen. <laughs> you guys are whispering in chat. <laughs> whispering uh, loudly. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. Uh, 17. Oh, a 15? Yeah. Let me see. Uh, a 15 does hit, yeah. Six damage total? Yep. All right, as you just kind of, like, carve uh, from, like, Kara, you kind of see just a, a, a halberd blade reach out of nowhere with its icy blue uh, tip, right, uh, DeQuinn? Yeah, the whole tip and blade is nice. And it just kind of... And it just kind of comes and just like scratches and slices in the back of the ogre and he kind of growls. Um, and as you can kind of see as that, as he makes that strike against him, uh, the cloudiness kind of around his eyes as, as, as he was kind of declaring that he was not who he thinks he is or who he really is not. Anyway, uh, <laughs> kind of leaves for a second. He goes, no, no, uh, for I friend, no, I friend. I smash all you. Uh, and I think up next is Odaxi. Let me switch back here. Odaxi, this minus six. Okay. Oh. Uh, I want to. I just kind of want. I, I want to. Use this cart and just kind of shove it into the ogre, knock him off kilter. As a, I don't know if I could do that as a bonus action. Uh, there's a. Shove I should action. be able to, right? There's a shove. Yeah, there's a shove action. You wanna? Oh no, um, that's just an action action. Yeah, it's an action. Um, you wanna? Kind you of know what? I'll even just one more. I'll just try to upend it onto him. Okay. Using Mid my, yeah, using my strength <clears throat> here. Sure. Um. You just want to what, what? What's the end goal here? Do you want to do damage, or do you want to just try and pin him under it, or? Yeah, I want to smash him with it. Okay. Um. Whatever happens, happens. If he takes damage, that's fine. But it's still gonna. Sure, make a strength check. I mean, if you, as you as you just kind of bull rush this this broken wagon here and try and just jam it into the side of, of the ogre. Okay, not bad. So we'll say. Um. Let's 
let's see, BC, SDT, SDC10, I'll do, I'll do 2D4. Seems appropriate, I suppose. Two, three, oh, I'm not terrible rolls, actually. Uh, so as you, as you kind of come and you just, you grasp this, uh, this wagon that's between the two of you, and you kind of lift it up and just, just smash it against his side, uh, up against the side of his face, um, you can tell that, like, it kind of, like, stuns him a bit, and he looks around and kind of snarls at you as well. Um, it was, it was a int pretty effective strike, actually, for, uh for not being a weapon, for being a, 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 a makeshift sort of attack there. Uh, do you want to do a bonus action or anything? Or move? Um, yeah, I should probably, I'll just move around back away from the, uh, from the, what's it called, the other guy. Okay. Just kind of form up back here. All right, Caro, you're up. All right, he... I am going to uh, wing my hammer at the ogre. Okay, from a, <laughs> from a top Terry. Yeah. And I have advantage with my vow. Oh, <laughs> four damp four damage. So from a top Terry, uh, you're, you're top. what's that? Um, on top of that, a purple glow, like a purple burst of energy, purple and blue burst of energy bursts out. Uh, I'm going to Divine Smite. <laughs> okay. Is it awesome? Uh, it is. 2d8. Oh my. Whoa. Dang. You need to roll two eights? I guess I did. Oh my goodness. So, on top of Terry, you kind of get up behind. You're actually pretty close to the top of the ogre's head, like, sitting on top of a horse, you know. And as you wheel your hammer out, and you guys, you, you watch as Carol kind of comes back and, like, connects, like, on the back of the head. It's, it's a solid blow. You hear a good thump, and the ogre kind of repels a little bit. Um, but after, like, it's, as, as the thump happens, there's, like, this sort of, like, purplish energy that swirls from behind it almost looking like a hammer itself, and it just wallops the back of the ogre uh, with three times the force of Karo's actual hit. Uh, and you can see he kind of stumbles forward, and he's, uh, like, one knee is kind of, he's using to, to stand and prop himself up, and he's seen his eyes essentially rolled to the back of his head from the, the blunt force trauma to the back of the head. And he uh, he's looking on uh, death's door, essentially. He's not barely maintaining consciousness right now as it is. Um, that was a monster hit uh, on Monster Divine Smite for sure. Uh, anything else you want to do, Kara? What can I say? Uh, that'll be my turn. Okay. Davos, you're up. Yeah, I'm concerned to use other magic uh, around this facade here, so I am going to uh, shoot the ogre with a crossbow. Okay. Uh, it'll be a disadvantage if because if, if, you're right in front of it. I'm going to stab him with a dagger. Okay. <laughs> and by stab him with a dagger, you mean stab him with your great club that you're holding? Yes. It's a, it's a, it's a farce, that's, but I, I don't think that's going to do it anyway. <laughs> it'll look like he's stabbing him with a great club, but he's actually stabbing him with a dagger. He has four hit points left, and his, uh, his armor class is 11. I am so good at Dungeons and So Dragons. how would you like <laughs> so good? How would you like to how would you like to kill your 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 large version of yourself? So I, I guess I need some clarification here before I answer that question. Thanks for asking. Oh, I sure, think, sure, sure, sure. Uh, so when I shift, does my dagger look like a club or does my dagger look like a dagger? Uh, That's probably, what I'm thinking. Yeah, it probably does look like a dagger. Yeah, it does. Okay. Aww. Um then with my large hand, like just like the the my forefinger and thumb. Okay. Uh, I just want to take the dagger and push it into his head a little bit. Like, whoop. Because <laughs> I'm so large. Uh, and then he, just, he should just die. I'll put it right in his ear. Uh, yeah, so as he's kind of like reeling over, uh, trying to like get his, like, he's counting stars right now from the blow from the back of Caro. Uh, extremely confused, looking around. And uh, as, right as he like kind of looks at you, you just kind of meander over and just. It's almost like a, 
like a surgeon just kind of stabs him like effortlessly like in the ear and and there's like a moment where like he doesn't even believe he's actually been stabbed and then he just collapses over dead uh before i, I want to use my free action to okay. say slaves slaves take imposter out of cave <laughs> okay uh all right well for now I think we'll end combat, I suppose. And I have no fucking clue what's going on here. <laughs> uh, remove all turns, clear list, we'll clear. Uh, I'll give us some more normal is music, I suppose. Um, oh, it's so weird when it's quiet, isn't it? Let's go here. I don't, I don't even know. This might be too creepy, actually. We need the drum. Get the drum out. I, you know what? I, I'd have to look at my list of pre-approved music. The the ancient song of the Quinn's people. <laughs> song of the tribe. Uh, I haven't heard the Quinn's comments in a while. He's I was struggling with mics. Just or... fueled in the rage of combat. Yeah. Uh, the ogre kind of collapses over, uh, and you guys all see as Dequin tells you in, I don't know, fake ogre voice, the uh, carry the, carry the ogre outside. The Verbi looks extremely confused, is kind of looking back and forth between you and the, how is, how possible? Two friends. It makes no sense. Uh, I will tell him, um, uh, I, uh, ogre, ogre, me strong, imposter weak. Um, I search for, uh, reasons you, uh, go do boss things. Go do boss things? Go <laughs> do boss things. Uh, I need that on the show. <laughs> I help. I help slaves. See you soon, and I'm gonna help grab this guy and drag him. <laughs> you gonna drag his over? Yeah, and I'm gonna say, uh, "Push, weak slaves." Uh, as you start to walk away, though, uh, the verbi is gonna look at Caro and point. And that my horse. Yes, get off horse, slave. Get off horse, slave. He's just trying to say what it like. He says more convincing. <laughs> um... Yeah, I'd roll intelligence text just to make sure I understood what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to do that as well. I am mega confused. Oh, but nope. dude, Davos has given you guys pretty good clues here to try and like piece together what his intention is. <laughs> It'd be great uh, if he told everybody what his intention was, but he's this is what he seems to be doing here. Can I? Oh, okay. Oh no, never mind. Go to pick up. Okay, I will get off and I will be like, the horse can drag it out, too. So you're also gonna now use broken English. <laughs> that's what I'm. That's what I'm understanding. That's what my the entire party's devolved into. I think so. <laughs> We're just slaves. That's. Uh, I don't, uh, let me see here. I think, uh... Me, Grimlock. <sighs> me, Pull up King. my... Pull oh, up my ver, ver big Marauder here. I'll go to Whisper to Davos. I'm like, uh, aren't we meant to kill it to save the people of the town? <laughs> <laughs> look, look. Make a stealth check, uh, to Quinn, <laughs> as you whisper that to Davos, the ogre. Uh, the, the, the verb looks at you, Caro, and goes, that, that my horse, put, put horse back. So stealthy. The horse can help. Put horse back, slaves. We smart, you stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, does Kara be feel stupid right now? <laughs> I'm mighty confused. Let take imposter outside. 
<laughs> All right, so you're gonna you're gonna grab uh, the uh, the ogre and start to drag him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm so uh, this, it, you gonna try to do it by yourself or? No, I know uh-huh. I commanded the slave to help me. The Quinn and I will then do it then. Between all of you, you're able to slowly yeah, I'm, start. Able to... I'm here begrudgingly putting Terry back in the pen. Okay. All right, and we'll drag the body out silently. And I look. <laughs> I look over at the Quinn and like, uh, and no, furrow my no, brow no. to shut the heck up. <laughs> I, uh, uh, okay. I don't even. I don't even know what to do here. I don't. All right. Here we go. We're gonna roll. We're gonna roll here to see if he is gonna follow you guys or not. Let's see. I think we're level ten. All right, so me and DeQuinn are on both sides of this guy, and then Davos is leading us out, or trying to, right? Yeah, uh, so you guys start to drag him away. Uh, the Verbeek uh, looks at you both and kind of goes back, and he's going to meander over to the pin after she puts the, the horse back and secure the pin over here. Um... <laughs> Uh, Sorry, no. I, uh, I, Davos, you care to explain what we're doing? Is Meat okay? You guys hear from behind you. What does he say? Is is Meat okay? Mead okay. Mm-hmm. And I say, um, I forget where Mead is. <laughs> you smart, benevolent one. Benevolent? Benevolent? <laughs> uh, mead, mead, mead and cave, uh, to the north here. I, I check once we dispose of stupid imposter. I go check now. And he's gonna kind of run to, he's gonna run off into the corridor above up here. See ya. <laughs> Davos, what's the plan? Why are yeah. we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So check it out. Check it out. And I'll uh, I'll read Davos real quick. And I'll be like, yo, we are going to smoke that fool. Um, <laughs> he's like going in a cave by himself to go check on some mead. Let's just go up there and wreck his whole day. I mean, we could have just done that before. Why I mean, I, I understand where you're coming. Dude, I didn't around. have a lot of time. I didn't have a lot of time to think about it. All right. Take it on my feet. You didn't have a lot of time to think about things, and you came up with something that just makes things more convoluted. Well done. Congratulations. Listen, new guy, this for sure worked, all right? You made me drag it over. Yeah, listen, it's like a workout. Do you guys, how far are you guys dragging the, uh, I know you can't move I, much further think, in the cave. I think we're like in the cave mouth. I don't think, I don't think we waited, yeah, right? Did, we were like, we actually shouldn't cave, put it outside because that'll attract attention. Yeah. What's, who's, somebody's mic is. I think it's DeQuinn, maybe. That was, or Caro. Caro's chair, always. That uh, was me. I was, I was in the conservatory and it started raining. <laughs> it was very loud in there when it rained. You have a conservatory? Oh. Is it like a it's wizard's a thing? Yeah, yeah. No, Ma- mansion you, you confirmed. Mansion confirmed. <laughs> Is there a candlestick in there? It's like a tiny-ass like tiny room with like a glass roof. Alright, Miss Scarlet, let's get back in there. and As you guys drag uh, the body towards the mouth cave and you're discussing what you're going to do next, you hear from behind you another voice ring out. Uh, and it goes, Dog! You home? Is this this one has dog a dog or Doug? Doug. 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 <laughs> D-U-H-G. Listen, it's gotta be pronounced Doug, right? How else do you pronounce says, it? And he says that from up here? You hear, no, you hear another voice, similar, but more higher pitch coming from the mouth of the cave that you, the one that, the entrance that you came from. Shit. Uh, so, shoot. <clears throat> okay, I re-ogre. Okay. <laughs> How, can you do this at, at will? Yeah. An action, yeah. Sure, that's... It seems fair. But he keeps the same clothes, same equipment. It just alters his appearance. Yeah. Oh, you're in the same clothes too, huh? Yeah, so he's a rogue <laughs> in a purple oh, robe. Yeah. Okay. But that guy was so dumb anyway, so don't worry about it. Yeah. He did roll literally oh a zero God. on his intelligence check, but maybe should have had a disadvantage, but it's okay. It's what happens, happens. We're, we're learning here. Uh, you. So 
coming through the snow from behind you and approaching through, like, through the mouth of the cave that you guys came through, you see a mishappen face with a really too wide smile, and she is clutching a spear in one hand while her other arm is cradling a, whisker, a wicker basket filled with tiny bits of shiny metal. Doug! You home, Doug? And she's walking towards you. I go to the front of the cave to, so I can be the first one to greet her. We should shuffle back and hide this body. Yeah, we'll pull the body back. <laughs> let's let's let this this cart I broke was full of hay, right? We can like Dump shovel it, it under the there. <laughs> from no, there you go. From know, behind, there's a lot of hay in there. From, right. behind, from behind you hear you hear uh, you hear who you assume now his name is Doug, kind of kind of respond me here, uh, and that's where we're going to call tonight's episode because. <laughs> I have to figure out now how to handle this situation too. So, uh, and I don't want to get into combat and get into like too much further into everything tonight. So, uh, okay. we'll call it. You have a you have a new. Can we uh, at least see if we successfully hide? Oh, I guess you have to figure out. So never mind. No, if you want to, you want to try to hide the body under under here. <laughs> yeah, to say, yeah. Uh, roll... In the broken cart. <laughs> uh, roll a. Um, and I. Uh, uh... A deception? A slight, uh, it, slight of hand? I was going to say, too, and I want to... Uh, well, what do you want if to... I can find the thing. Never mind, I'm not, I don't want to do anything. <laughs> okay. Uh, make a... Uh, God, man, I don't know. Uh... Oh, yeah, channel divinity to be to be good at deception. <laughs> okay, okay, so you're going to channel... Gain proficiency. Div- I'll channel divinity, knowledge of the ages... To know how to hide a body better better than anyone's <laughs> hidden the body because it's an ogre and it's very hard to hide. Um, so I gain proficiency in, uh, in in deception. Okay, we will uh, we will say. I I don't want to do survival again because I feel like we do survival all the time. I, I yeah I think deception's fine. So roll, roll deception uh, with your your proficiency. Uh, so you may have to add two, I think, um, just to whatever you roll, um, as you try to deceivingly <laughs> tuck away. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> so you guys see? You guys see? So that's a f- hey. To clarify, that's a four. That's a four. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, thank you. Um, you guys see? Uh, uh, Odaxi. He he just oh, like lifts up with like sheer 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 strength and like sets the cart like gently on top of the ogre whose hands are now laying out each side and he sees that and so he gets some hay and he stuffs some hay on top of the uh of the hands so it looks like a really crappy scarecrow with like hay coming out of of his of his shirt and uh he's just kind of laying there um a, a small pool of blood is starting to form maybe under him he looks Can't super hidden. Adaxi, you've ne- you've never you haven't hidden any bodies in your time, but you're one hundred percent positive this is the best hidden body you've ever you've ever had in your entire <laughs> life. So that's not suspicious. I am the best cleric in the world, <laughs> <laughs> and that was the best channel divinity I've ever done. Uh, how long did that last? Like, you want me to do what? <laughs> <laughs> Give you help to hide a body of an ogre? Yeah, sure. Yeah, the gods are like, well, this is a new one, but give it to him. Give him the juice he needs, guys. So if they have a sense of humor, <laughs> those gods. Uh, how long does that last? Because you just make sure you keep up with it for next session. Uh, my channel divinity? Yeah, it's like a minute. Is it a minute? Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Okay, so that's good. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, that's where we'll, uh, we'll take a break and see how much more off the rails this uh can go because uh yeah i um i was not prepared you know i was ne- i was not prepared to for the for the for the for the double for the double the double play there who would be <laughs> uh do uh yeah so so really quick i'll i'll end the stream then uh thank you everyone that that swung by um we actually had a pretty active chat so that's really exciting um, me personally, I'm streaming, you know, throughout the, really the rest of the year and Jukes, I think you are too. Are you still doing extra life stuff or are you kind of done since the uh, event's I over? might, I might run a couple more, yeah, streams, try to get like, get more towards my goal. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's, I thought the same thing. So, um, so both of us, uh, will be running extra life streams throughout. So you can, uh, find and or follow us here in the chat if you're interested. Um, but thank you for everyone who showed up and, you know, we'll see you in two weeks as we try to, figure out 
what is going on with these two Verbeeks and how our party of slaves and many ogres are going to weasel their way out of um, of this scenario. So thank you, everyone, and have a good night. Ba -ba 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 -ba. All right, stream is dead.